Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. I've been excited about today. You know, we started back in March to uh, get this scheduled, and something happened. So I've been rescheduled two or three times. We're just excited to be with everyone and all the entities represented today. Uh, I would draw the visitors' attention to a sign-in sheet here if there's anything on the agenda that you would like to uh, sign up to do. We call this thing a mini-retreat, a mini-conference, uh, a joint board uh, meeting. So whatever we want to call it, uh, I just look forward to some great input today. We're not uh, really here to... Uh, Solve the world's problems, other kinds of problems, but uh, just get things out on the table and know how we can uh, proceed uh, multilaterally uh, as, as county boards and city councils uh, and other leaders of the county. I actually uh, thought about this three years ago and <coughs> thought how valuable it would be to uh, collectively get together and share ideas. Uh, there's so many things that might may go on in the city of Hiram. Yeah. Um, you know, somebody on the board like like Ron may never hear about, it. And, and so there needs to be more regular interaction, uh, in my opinion. And then I get to know this guy better, uh, and we shared a vision to, to do this. And what a beautiful place to do it on a beautiful day. Uh, I've got the best view uh, looking outside, so maybe halfway through we can reverse. If you guys are on, on this side, um, I would like to uh, thank a few people uh, for making this happen. Uh, I just recognize Dan. I don't know if I would ever push him if he hadn't locked arms with me. Uh, Rebecca built the agenda that we need to use because uh, most of the organizations in the room uh, do have a core represented here. So we want to stay legal uh, and not get Jason beaten on me about anything. So uh, I want to thank Angela for all the coordination and she worked with Yolanda uh, just to set the room up and uh, do the coordination and thank you all for giving her your uh, responses uh, as you see here. Uh, I don't know who did these nice little uh, name tags, name plates, but uh, you did those, okay. thank him later. Thank all of you for your time and commitment. Uh, I, I don't really anticipate being here, what you may have seen, the start and end of me, and I know some of you have other meetings, but I think we can cover a lot um, by, by lunch or a little bit thereafter. Um, the citizens that are here, just thank you for your interest and your involvement uh, to come and uh, see what's going on, to hear what's going on, and uh, I was doing a little uh, light reading um, here in, in our uh, Book of Ordinances last night, uh, and there's actually three of these. Uh, but <clears throat> my glasses out here. I don't have my glasses. I have my glasses. Um, <clears throat> and actually, <clears throat> in our Book of Ordinances, we have. Uh, we have <coughs> derived these from OCCG, which is Official Code of Georgia Annotated, and <coughs> the Pauley County Economic Development Incorporated set up. We have to call our day-to-day -day operations the EDO, Economic Development Organization. Uh, and they, uh, <coughs> in Section 2 of 167 of our Book of Ordinance, Pauley County Economic Development Incorporated, established that the duties, goals, recruiting new business, helping local business sustain and expand their local operations, promote uh, tourism, develop a quality workforce by focusing on employment and job skills, training and support entrepreneurs, and foster startup activity, enhance and protect the quality of life and maintain vibrant downtowns and community centers. Uh, Board of Commissioners hereby establishes the EDO, uh, which will be governed by the Board of Directors as provided and the most uh, recently approved bylaws. And then getting in um, to the specific duties in coordination with Pauley County Chamber of Commerce, establish and administer the County Economic Development 
on the incentives program to include, but not limited to, the economic development incentives ordinance, grants, and Northwest Georgia Commission through uh, retaining existing businesses, I'm sorry, through Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, uh, as a means to encourage job creation, assist uh, in retaining existing businesses and recruiting new businesses, support redevelopment and rehabilitation of targeted areas within the county, and support small businesses and entrepreneurs. And it's got about six more, and the last one says, coordinate semi-annual economic development roundtable discussions, that's what I call this, square table, uh, with local, regional, and state economic development partners to assist in discussing ideas and programs that, that could help the county and the three cities of the county. Um, so we're really supposed to be doing this, and I'm glad we are today. Uh, we can finally pull this off on June 16th and have a good experience today. I'm going to uh, let Dan, who uh, shared this vision, uh, say a few things that are on his mind and heart. So when Dave brought me into this uh, 18 months ago after I ran for the school board, um, I became a member of the IBA and the airport authority. Um, and it's I've been drinking to a water hose, fire hose for better part of a year and a half. But one thing I figured out is, is that we as a county uh, haven't been working together. It's a little bit dysfunctional. It, it, our history is a little bit dysfunctional from that perspective. Um, and what I hope to gain from today is um, very, very, a very slim um, picture of how we move forward. One, I, I would like everybody to see the value in getting together around the table um, and discussing how all of these boards and, and you know, the school board, the cities, the airport authority, the IBA, the board of commissioners, how we all need to have one common goal for the taxpayers of Pauley County. Um, which is to move the county forward in a meaningful way um, and, and utilize all of those resources uh, together with, with a common plan. And we've hired Michael. He's our new economic development director here in Paulding County. And <clears throat> as I've learned a little bit about the history and peeled the onion back, um, I, I think previous economic development has failed in a meaningful way because all the people around this table haven't sat together and given the economic development director a clear path forward with the understanding that Hiram, the county, Dallas, the school board, uh, and the IBA and airport authority are going to support his mission moving forward. And I think it's super important. So everybody got a, a draft um, set of documents in, in the uh, calendar inbox a little bit, and Dave asked everybody to read that. If nothing else today, I hope to get Dallas, Hiram, and the Board of Commissioners on the same page with those three documents. That's the first step. Then Michael can go out and do his job, not worrying that, uh, that Frank or James is, and their group are going to have any kind of conflict with how the county's doing things. And I realize that there's a couple things on those documents that we've got to work through. But Michael's committed and, and, and is seasoned enough to understand how to work those differences out um, and, and we move forward in a meaningful way. Uh, we're <clears throat> so I'm wearing three hats. I'm the chairman of the IBA, I'm sitting on the airport authority, and now I also am a member of the school board, which is a lot to do right now, and I have, fortunately have the time. I don't plan on continuing all, <laughs> all three of those roles long term, but it's given me a unique opportunity to see that our airport is a gem and can be a huge part of our economic development in this county and offset the tax burden to the homeowners. <clears throat> It's given me the ability to see that by parking big airplanes here, we can take the burden off of Dr. Otot and his team because we're a low wealth school district and we're educating 2.9 kids on two kids, essentially the budget of two children based on our, our equalization grants. And 
I'm not going to get into the granular part of this. Um, and the IBA has been in such a dysfunctional mess for so long um, that that I'm really um, glad to see that Brian and Stacy spearheaded getting this EDO thing moving forward uh, along with the, the Board of Commissioners so that we can have a basis for real economic development and change in the county moving forward. So today, I, we don't, just like Dave said, I don't expect we're going to solve the county's problems. What I want, want is for everybody to be able to take away those three documents, have an understanding of them after Michael presents them, and, and be able to say, yes, we can get on board with that set of guidelines so that he can go do his job. Then I'd like the second commitment to be that we set a time in the future, and, and for a while, I'd like to do this once a quarter. And I don't know if that's ambitious, and you guys all, all have input on this, but I, I think if we get together once a quarter for, for probably uh, uh, two, two full calendar years, we can develop a set of goals, set measuring sticks to those goals, and give the tax. We, we just went through a pretty contentious chairman's race. Half of this, half of those voters, half of those Republican voters that voted in this chairman's race, they were almost split down the middle. And we as elected officials have to understand that half of the county in that respect has a different opinion than the other half of the county. And we've got to cater to both sides of them. So we need to listen to, to, to the side that didn't prevail and understand what they want to see and try to develop a, a, a set of goals for moving forward that makes everybody happy. And that's really, when Dave said, hey, I'd love to have this, and I really wanted to do this back in, I don't know, it was March, we tried to get this thing together. But what, what it allowed me to do um, as the election cycle went on was to identify that, you know, when we first started this, we were only a few people uh, we were only going to have a few people here, and as I began to understand a, a little bit more by paying attention to what was going on in the election cycle, I felt like it made a lot more sense to have every single one of our boards, and I think I, we think we got everybody. I don't know if we missed anybody. If we did, that's on me, and I apologize for that. But uh, it, it, I found it meaningful to have everybody have a seat at the table. Um, so, again, what Dave says, we're not going to solve them all, but I think if we can all agree that we're going to try to move in the same direction, and we may not all agree on the, on the, on the fine points, but I think as, as a group, if we come together and we put, that, put the goals in place and we agree as a majority, then we're representing the county the right way. So that's really all I had, you know, what my vision was for getting all of you guys together. And so that you can all hear from each other, I think there should, should be some time that each, you know, uh, uh, individual board can lay out a little bit of their their challenges and where they're at, so everybody can hear that, and and we can uh, lean on the EDO to move this um, to move this forward. A little bit. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. And what I'd like to do next is go counterclockwise, uh, I know most of us know each other, but I've seen just uh, waiting for the meeting to start, a couple people introducing themselves. So what I'd like you to do is say your name, uh, what board or boards that you're on, and uh, if you have a position on one of those boards, what that is. Uh, Brian Stoke, Post Board Commissioner, also EDM. Uh, Terry. Terry. Michael Hughes, Paul uh, Jason Phillips, um, with Tally Richardson, Cable, who serves the county attorney, as well as the city attorney for the city of Iowa. I'm Ron Davis, Post One Commissioner for our Board of Commissioners. Ken Thigpen, Westside Bank, and ADO Board. Chris Robinson, Public County Planning and Zoning, and on the ADO Board. Uh, Brian O'Tonic, uh, Superintendent, Public County School District. Good morning, Eric Hofstetter, Chief Operations Officer, mm -hmm. Public County School District. <coughs> I'm Kathy Carter, the mayor of Great Tim of Hiram. I'm Kendall Schmidt, city manager of the city of Dallas. Earl Lenico of the uh, Airport Authority. Terry Tibbetts, CEO of the Airport Authority and the Airport Director. Terry Tidmore on the Airport Authority. I'm uh, Tom Cable, I represent the uh, school district and the EDO and the, uh, the two authorities. 
Tom Morris on the Airport Authority and also IBA. Jody Palmer, I'm the city manager for the city of Hiram. I'm also currently serving as the chairman of the planning commission for the Palmer Board of Commissioners. Frank Ryan, mayor of the city of Hiram, also on the IBA and the Airport Authority. I'm Stacey Hamby, president and CEO of the Chamber. I'm the lucky one. I have a seat on the Airport Authority, the IBA, and the EPO. <laughs> James Kelly, uh, Mayor of the City of Dallas. Sandy Caker, Post 2 Commissioner, BOC, and EBA. Uh, Frank Baker, County Minister. David Small, uh, Chairman of the Airport Authority. Uh, Dan Nolan, uh, I'm a School Board Member, Chairman of the IBA, and on the Airport Authority. And Dave Carmichael, by virtue of the position uh, of being Chairman of the Board of Commissioners on the IBA and the Airport yeah. Authority. I'm ex officio with the chamber. So, um, since we do have so many quorums, we've had to, the realities are there are certain realities. And I just really want to know that those have been taken care of and announced. And thank you again, County Clerk, uh, Rebecca Meredith, for that. Um, we, we do have an agenda. I hope you all have one. Uh, and Dan and I uh, will collaboratively uh, come in order in, in a minute. First, I want to uh, say that this agenda is just kind of an underlying guideline. Uh, I've gotten full approval. We can discuss uh, what we feel like we need to discuss as we go through the agenda items or face first, some conversation in a little different direction. If we get two topics going on at once, Angela, if you'll just write down the, uh, the one, uh, and we'll hold off on it if we have time to, to cover it. And there's going to be some, to start the agenda, there's going to be some background information that I think we need so that we understand the, uh, the roles and the functions and the purposes of each board. And you didn't bring this to board, but one of y'all will cover that for the DOE. Um, that's great, too. Um, <clears throat> the main goal of this meeting is, is economic development and how we're going to bring um, more tax revenue and job opportunities to the county. So that, that's what I would like to see as, as our main focus today, particularly with uh, what we can glean from uh, Michael Hughes' background and knowledge, and he's gonna give us a little bit of advice, so I look forward to that. I wanna start out with a little uh, group participation here, and <clears throat> I need to stand up to do this. And Terry, you, you, you're one of those FedEx pilots that can see you know what this is? Wait a minute, let me do this. <laughs> <laughs> That's for close-up stuff, right? Yeah. It looks almost like a hotel, like, free drink card from here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a free drink. Um, it's, it's a little gift. You can get your attention. One of our assistants in the office, um, raise your hand if, uh, if you can tell me what this is. Silent, silent one. Anybody raise their hand? Silos. <laughs> 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 I'm also the smartest one in the room. And you don't want to tell her. <laughs> 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 uh, I got a kick out of Stacy. We were sitting right over here the other night at the, um, the Museum of Flight dinner, and they were releasing people to go eat if they could answer the question. Stacy's trying to get all the answers right. <laughs> And about five tables released, and she's jumping up and down, and, and finally Terry gives her the answer to the next one. So we didn't have to go last. That's right. <laughs> All right, so yeah, these are farm silos, and sometimes I think we, uh, as, as board, um, it's different boards, we work in silos. And so that's, that's why I had Kristen draw that picture, and uh, I'm going to take just a minute. I shared this in the news and news um, March issue, but I see us like this. <clears throat> the triangle or anything that's three legged is strong. So in here is the EDO. You can put the VOC on one of the points, put the Chamber of Commerce on another point, and the IBA on the third point. And we need some ears on this thing. So, the 
here is we're going to get the uh, city of Dallas and Hiram. And then we need to, some wings. And we got the airport authority and the board of education. Now you uh, put a nice little bow on that. And you got a great gift package <laughs> for uh, the county of uh, Pauley County. So that's the way I see this. Uh, is we all work together, we overlap where we can, where our missions integrate, uh, we make that happen, we're unified, integrated, connected, and uh, I got a list of things here, and I'm going to save it for later, but the different, different things we got going on with all these other seven uh, entities, um, and James, you may have not gotten it yet, but I, I wrote down the list of things you and I talked about. Uh, and then we got things with Hiram and the Chamber. Uh, but I want to say that, and you want to call a meeting to order now, officially? We haven't started yet. You see the Okay. So with, with all those introductory uh, comments and introductions, uh, I'll call the joint meeting of the, the boards and uh, city representatives and the Chamber to order at this time. And um, so glad to have the special guest of the uh, education system here with Brian Otot and Eric uh, Hofstetler, and maybe Jeff Fuller will come in later. <coughs> uh, this is the 16th day of uh, June in 2020, and we have a draft agenda here with uh, Dan and I really co-leading this meeting. Um, covered the purpose as far as the announcements in the uh, introductory items. Uh, so we're going to start on the reports, and <clears throat> this is part of your homework assignment, so we're going to go down through the list here, and I'd like the different organizations to just state their mission, their function, uh, just add your meeting schedule, and if you have any constitutional authority from the state or the county, uh, that was what... Uh, Report number one was going to be. Yes, sir. Yeah. Just skipped right over that. Thank you. And Ron, you don't care. I'm not sitting next to you. Well, I have uh, asked my, my very uh, worthy and um, beautiful uh, assistant to bring us the invitation and lead us in the in the place of the flag. So stand in here. Good morning. Let's all bow our heads, please. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today as humble as I know how, asking for your wisdom, guidance, and purpose. We've gathered here today to get a better understanding of how we can come together and move Paulding County forward. Father, we've not always seen eye to eye, but you are in charge. Therefore, please allow us to put our differences aside and work collectively together to provide a perfect union and strive as one and prosper as a county. Please give us the opportunity to see things from a different lens changing our mind, hearts, and souls, allowing us to work together and show Paulding County what we are made of. Your continued grace, mercy, and love will sustain us and give us no peace like no other. So these and many blessings I ask in your son Jesus' name, amen. Let all God's people say amen. Say whatever you want to. Yeah. 
Well, I, I'm going to uh, actually uh, lean on Mr. Tom Cable. Uh, sorry, Tom, I know you're over there. I'm going to lean on you a little bit here. Uh, my, my tenure on the IBA has been 18 months. Uh, I, I understand what our function is, but, but the history, I really can't add, add a lot of color to that, but I thought maybe uh, since you've been around as long as you might not, you might not, uh, 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 you might not feel right bad right doing that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Usually Stacy starts with those. I appreciate that, Dan. Now I'll help any way that I can. Do you, you, so do you want to just kind of a brief history of, of well, I mean, I, the IBA is obviously it's a constitutional authority. It's created by an act of the George Constitution in 1962. Um, it went for many, many years sort of inactive. It didn't have a lot, there wasn't a lot of activity from uh, really over the 60s and, and on into the 70s. Uh, began doing more and more things in the 1970s and in the 80s. And of course, as the counties continued to grow, it's gotten more and more of a, um, uh, taken more of a, more, more, on more projects. Um, we do a lot of um, help, obviously, with economic development issues, trying to do bond issues, to try to help certain private businesses. Um, certainly owns land as it developed industrial parks over the years. And this even, believe it or not, actually goes back before me. I, you know, I, I haven't been here as long as, uh, as some of those projects have been going on. Um, but it, it currently has a, 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 a multitude of projects out there in different states. It has anything from some, some a few developed lots that, that are for sale that we try to sell to private businesses. All the way up to some, some property that was just purchased not too long ago, which is still raw land that's in the, in the development stage. Um, it has a broad range of powers. Um, it has the ability to, uh, to develop property. It has the ability to sell property. It oftentimes can own property and then lease that property back to individual businesses, which allows the, the businesses to get some, some tax advantages because the, the uh, Industrial Building Authority is a tax-exempt entity. So it's just kind of a, it's a vehicle for which uh, the, the county has been able to use, that private businesses can use to try to help um, spur economic development. It's, it's obviously its purpose is to promote the economic development of Paulding County and to create jobs here in Paulding County. So, so to add to that, one of the things that, um, that I feel like is important with the IBA is, is that we step back as the board from the direct uh, uh, engagement of economic development. That, that property that we bought on Bill Creek Parkway uh, really should be the last real thing we do from the standpoint of a direct e economic development project. Um, and we're, you know, my, my feeling is, is that we should get to about a once a quarter meeting. We support Michael's mission and the EDO's mission. Um, that's, and that's why you guys, well, COVID-19 notwithstanding, there really has not a lot of been a lot of things that we could do from an IBA standpoint uh, due to COVID-19, but there really hasn't been anything on the agenda. That's why you haven't seen meetings. So, um, you know, rather than try to uh, pull one meeting a month out and, and create an agenda, there's not really a need for that at this point. Now that we have the EDO up and functioning, um, our board's vision, I believe, is to say that we're going to support that mission uh, in any way we can, financially, uh, you know, legally, um, uh, through their um, staffing, uh, uh, all of the things that that um, the EDO will need to move forward and, and have a basis. The EDO has, um, and I don't have a financial report right now. We, we didn't do a financial report, but I, I can get one out. Um, but we're sitting on a little bit of money. The, the land that we have on Bill Carruth Parkway is in, is, is in development. Um, we just reappraised the uh, Dallas Industrial Park. Um, but more than anything, it's, it's a responsible move forward on how we handle land and economic development projects by supporting Michael. Okay, the Chamber of Commerce, Ms. Stacy Henry, you're up. Um, I think our mission at the Pauline Chamber is to enhance, support, advocate for a prosperous business community. Um, I think we do a great job of that for our around 650 members. We provide quality educational leadership and networking opportunities um, through such programs as our leadership holding. We do a government affairs. We do workforce development, um, work power functions, all that keeps the community engaged. 
education and form. Uh, we currently have about 14 different programs. Um, we meet bi-monthly from odd months and from 9 to 10.30. Uh, so we will be meeting next month. Hopefully we'll get through that about how well this meeting went. Um, staff includes three additional staff members plus myself. Uh, we're a 506 organization. We're governed by a set of bylaws and it states that we have to have a minimum board size of 15. We currently have 16 uh, volunteer board members, which are very diverse to represent our membership. That includes small businesses, large corporations, and even a nonprofit. Uh, we have eight ex officio seats. Um, those are great for reporting purposes to keep our board informed and for their input um, at those bi monthly meetings. That includes a seat for the board of commissioners, which Chairman Dave Carmichael fills. Uh, we have a representative from each city that attends to report. Um, we also have the universities of uh, KSU and Chat Tech and Georgia Highlands attend. And then um, Dr. O'Connor School District, as well as the College Career Academy CEO of Morris Parish. Okay. All right, let's move to the city of Dallas and James Kelly. Well, I don't have that much to report, but uh, as far as the city, uh, our, our mission is forward is to develop a better, stronger relationship within the county um, and also for our citizens to be a, a more safe, uh, viable city. Uh, we have our council meetings on the first Monday of, of every, every month at a work session at 5 o'clock then the, uh, the uh, mayor council meeting at, at 7. Um, but we're, we're excited to be here. Uh, we are living this in pretty unprecedented times. COVID and everything's been going on here the last few months. So um, we're excited about this meeting, about improving our relationship with the county and, and with the city of Hines. So thanks for having us. Thanks for being here, James. Okay, let's move to the Airport Authority and Chairman David Swamp. Dave, as on cue, we just had an aircraft pull up here in that business right there for Paulding County. That is a company coming into our county to do business, which is what we exactly want to see. Uh, the mission statement for the Paulding County Airport Authority is to proudly serve its citizens of Paulding County by professionally managing a modern, a safe, and efficient general aviation airport, meeting the aviation needs of our growing community while simultaneously enhancing educational experiences of our local students at all levels, supporting the economic development opportunities of local businesses, and providing civic and cultural activities and facilities to our citizens. The Airport Authority is an independent entity charged with the operation and oversight of the airport. Uh, the authority is comprised of the County Commissioner, the Mayors of Hiram and Dallas, the CEO and President of the Chamber of Commerce, and five appointed citizens of the county. We meet 9 a.m. every third Wednesday, and I believe, Tom, we are a, our constitutional authority is from the Georgia General Assembly uh, from 1962, is that so, right? It was 1972, it was created by an act of the Georgia General Assembly. Right? Okay, 72, thank you. Thank you very much, yes, sir. Um, let's go to the city of Hiram. Uh, we have Frank Moran. Thank you for uh, putting this meeting together. Uh, I'd like to uh, first highlight on what you're talking about, about everybody coming together, Team Paulding. Uh, we had experienced that uh, earlier this month. We had some requests from Black Lives Matter to do some rallies in Paulding County and in the city of Hiram. Uh, Chairman Carmichael called the meeting together. On Monday, we discussed it. On Wednesday, we brought the uh, Request the people requested the meeting. We brought them in and we talked. We were able to put together a plan that uh, included uh, Marshall Hess, the Paulding Marshall's office, Sheriff Gullage, Steve Duval from Dallas, and Chief Sailors from Hiram. We put together an action plan with the Georgia State Patrol for traffic control, crowd control. The meeting was held out at Taylor Farm Park. Then they came down and they drove down through the city of Hiram. Uh, every train went along without a hitch. It was uh, a very good program. 
last Saturday, we had another one, uh, Black Lives Matter rally at the corner of 92 and 278. We had the same partnership going together, and everything went along very well. There was no disruption of traffic. There were no incidents. Everything went on perfect. So that's what I call a real team called in approach. And not to, not to forget uh, Chief Pelfrey with the fire department. They were out there with the rescue units. Uh, they had a few uh, medical incidents uh, at Taylor Farm Park, but uh, the other ones, uh, everything went along just fine. Well, unfortunately, with, uh, with the COVID-19, we've had to cancel our 4th of July red, white, and blue fireworks uh, display. Uh, but we're going, we're going ahead with our Christmas tree lighting in partnership with the chamber. Uh, even with all that, all the disruption and everything going on, business has still been going on in, in Hiram. We've had a couple new businesses get open. We have more requests. Where business is going. Uh, things are moving along. Uh, we, we've had to close down City Hall, which did everyone else, but we're, we're open now. We're open for business. And uh, we've got uh, uh, we've got a deal going along. We're trying to get the uh, the owner of the building where the Olive Tree restaurant is. We're trying to get them to sign on the sewer because there's a piece of property right behind City Hall. We own a piece, they own a piece, we own another piece, we need that piece in the middle. And so there's a, a, an item on here about parking, and we'd like to take that and make that a big parking lot, a large parking lot, so that uh, when we do have events in the old downtown area, that we'll have ample parking for everybody to come for Christmas tree lighting, red, white, and bone. But it goes back next year. Uh, we've got a lot of irons in the fire. Uh, Jody, do you got anything to add to that? This is my left-handed man, and by the way, I am left-handed, so. <laughs> <laughs> we are seeing, as the uh, mayor pointed out, uh, economic activity continuing along uh, 278, 92 in Hiram. Uh, well, uh, but anyway, the, uh, <laughs> we've got a couple of new businesses, as you mentioned. One is a Chipotle restaurant, which is opening up where the Crystal used to be. Uh, we've got a couple of oil change places that have decided to come in and take up residency in Hiram, and we have a uh, a move that's going to be taking place or replacing. We have a restaurant wanting to come in down the hill where we've had several other restaurants come in, but this one is a notable one. Um, so we're hoping they'll have a far better approach to success and be more successful uh, with an auto change place that is going to be moving it uphill from us. Apparently there's a lot of automobiles that have seen the higher on 278. People seem to need them. Um, but no, we've, we've had good talks, and again, I would extend my thanks um, in my administrative position to other departments that I have to work with through both the city of Dallas, Kendall's office has been nothing short of helpful any time I've ever called, uh, either seeking advice or, or seeking assistance with something. The same thing can be said with the Board of Commissioners uh, offices and their departments, the uh, Community Development uh, Office, uh, Chris Robinson, Ann Littman, and all the rest of them. We work hand in hand with building permits, uh, inspections, and such, uh, and they are always uh, there to assist any time we've called. And usually we get a return phone call in a pretty quick fashion, I would think. Um, but uh, and Michael Justice with the Parks and Recreation Department, always helpful, always uh, willing to listen to us and give advice. Uh, we have a small uh, set of employees. Uh, we keep it that way. Uh, but when we need the additional assistance or advice, you know, Paul McKinney has always been there to, to work with us hand in hand. So hopefully we've been as helpful as we can. So that's our team following approach. Well, I was going to get uh, Pro Tem on my right to uh, do the county report, but he was somewhere way out in, in the Gulf catching snapper. So that's that's his excuse, and he's sticking to it. <laughs> Our, uh, the county mission is uh, with unity and purpose, work to enhance citizens' quality of life, uh, maximizing resources, to make Paulding County a better place to live, work, and play. Kind of an interesting history that uh, the first uh, board of commissioners was back in 1871. And three members, they didn't uh, leave Rebecca and me uh, their names at that time. Uh, it was abolished seven years later. It, it kind of gets comical here. It was reconstructed four years later uh, by the uh, State General Assembly. And you'll recognize some last names anyway. Uh, James Watson, R.H. McMillan, <coughs> and George Owen 
uh, there was a typo in here that said Georgia over and I thought I was going to have to call Sandy and say, you weren't really the first woman. <laughs> uh, but that was abolished uh, in 1887, five years later. Then uh, in 1917, there was a four-man board, which was J.W. Ragsdale, J.H. Arnold, P.W. Jones. I think the Jones family owned all this inventory. Yeah. Uh, and D.W. Wynn. Uh, and then for the third time, the Board of Commissioners was abolished <laughs> in 1920. Uh, and then in 1931, they tried to reconstitute her vote, and it didn't pass, it was rejected. So uh, somewhere uh, around the 1960s, I, I didn't want to bore you too much. Um, uh, in those days, that like 1965, they got an ordinary, uh, and now it's called a probate judge. And the ordinary was the CEO of the county. Uh, they did all the meeting minutes, and we actually have a big black book that's got uh, the minutes all the way up to 1972. Um, you know, the board of commissioners are always subject to, uh, to recall after their election. Uh, all it takes is a petition with 35% of the registered voters uh, writing in. So, if anybody want to recall, I should mention that too. <laughs> uh, uh, we meet on the second and fourth Tuesdays. The fourth Tuesday, we also add in the planning commission for applications for different types of zoning and special use permits. Um, we uh, establish resolutions, make policies, rules, and regulations that, that govern all the matters of the county's jurisdiction. Uh, the board of commissioners minus the chairman, tells the chairman uh, what actions the chairman is supposed to carry out. So see, I just take orders. And um, <clears throat> uh, any action that's in conflict with adopted resolutions uh, becomes null, void, and of no effect. So it's kind of hard to go out on your own and do anything, right? But we... Uh, Levy taxes, make appropriations, uh, we can incur indebtedness, bonds. Uh, we uh, handle all the county funds, the contracts that, that are needed on the highways or any other project. Take care of the roads and bridges, of course, and uh, various land and subdivision flats and decide how it's going to affect the school system, hopefully. Uh, we set up the voting precincts and approve those. And then we determine what capital improvements and prioritize capital improvements. So that's uh, what the county does and we have to tie in with everyone else. So save the best for last, our uh, EDO report from Michael joined us in uh, February and when we were having kind of a preliminary meeting as to what the agenda would be last week. Uh, we asked Michael, he was in on that meeting, if he would kind of give us a background of where he's been, what he's done. But uh, we're very fortunate to have him. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Chairman, and uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, I'm excited to be here, I'm part of the team Paulding. Um, as the Chairman mentioned, I started with Paulding uh, just four months ago in February, uh, about a month after that, uh, the pandemic hit. So, uh, an interesting uh, four months. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> but uh, I'm a graduate of Cal Poly Pomona, uh, which is a school just 40 miles east of Los Angeles. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree in urban planning and uh, approximately 34 years uh, professional experience as a city planner in the city of Los Angeles, Pasadena, California, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and then also Cobb County. And also worked in the private sector for a little bit with a company called Law. lived in the Atlanta area 30 years, and I've lived in, in Georgia, Atlanta, uh, actually longer than I lived in California, so I don't know if that makes me a native now, but <laughs> I like to put, make sure I get that on the record. Uh, I, uh, was, I started with Cobb County in April of 1990, and in 1998, I uh, was actually appointed the leader of the Economic Development Office uh, by the Board of Commissioners and County Manager. Um, also, 
certified uh, planner. I got that certification in 1993. Uh, I'm also a graduate of Leadership College. Uh, also the Regional Leadership Institute program that's administered by the uh, Atlanta Regional Commission. Um, I began, uh, I've worked in economic development for about 25 years in Cobb County. Um, we've done a number of things in terms of developing and administering a variety of uh, business economic incentive programs, and then also I think some very innovative economic development programs such as a business concierge program, business walks program, uh, an entrepreneur business startup for grant program, and then also a facade improvement program as well. Uh, during my tenure with Cobb, we, I've worked with a number of companies, many of which you've heard of uh, from Home Depot, HD Supply, Dave Paper, FedEx, FedEx Brown, Bellas, and then Thyssen Krupp Elevator, which is a company that recently announced that they were moving to Cobb uh, back in uh, 2018. And if you've been by Truist Park and the Battery Lake, you've seen a huge tower there that's under construction. Well, I got a chance to work on that. And I also worked on a, a small relocation of a, a team you might have heard of that moved from Atlanta to Cobb County as well. So we're, I was excited to have the opportunity. Who was it? Uh, <laughs> they're probably Atlanta Brothers. Um, also, it's important to mention too that um, during my tenure with Cobb, I was uh, uh, the recipient of a, what's called the Max Mac Henderson Public Service Award by the uh, Cobb Chamber of Commerce, and then also the Golden Goose Award, which is actually presented annually by the Cobb Board of Commissioners and the County Manager. Um, in my 25 years, homework assignment that I think I've distributed to you as well. Um, it's something that I've been working on since I got here in February. Um, those are economic incentive programs that um, have been crafted and designed um, for Paulding County. Um, there are programs that I, I administered while I was in Cobb, but I think they have some application here as well. Um, so I look forward to working with you on how that I think it's important to note that that those three documents that we send, if Michael can get everybody's buy-in on that, then he can work anywhere in the county in, at, at will to bring any, any, anybody in. There's there's no roadblocks there, and that's really what what we're looking for. What we're looking for is 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 so you guys are on board with him and your groups, so that that Michael can operate with impunity wherever he goes in the county and knows that, um, you know, aside from having to discuss specifics of packages, that, that the basis of the economic development side is, is in place and intact. And I personally look forward to working with Stacy to create that Golden Goose Award to give Michael uh, if he turns into the Golden Goose. <laughs> we get you one for Pauley County and one for Pauley County. <laughs> Next would be citizens. So we don't have any, anyone that signed up to be on these items. Um, put a little insert in there on the, under new business of uh, rules of engagement. And what I mean by that is, uh, as I alluded earlier, if we're on one topic and we kind of get off on a tangent, we still want to cover that, but we'll, we'll bring it back. I'll try to keep everybody on topic. Um, I don't want anybody to be shy. Uh, that, uh, hopefully you wouldn't be in this room if, if you were to speak your mind and uh, what your thoughts have been um, uh, over the months, over the years in, in the uh, positions you're in. Um, <clears throat> I had asked for additional agenda items to be submitted. No one submitted any additional uh, agenda items. 
just some housekeeping. If you need to go go to the restroom, uh, this is this is informal. If you want to grab a snack or coffee, um, just make yourself at home. And um, uh, probably goes without saying, if somebody else is talking, don't interrupt them. Let them finish their thought. And uh, those are the rules of the game. <laughs> Change to see the request. Why are you going to get me in trouble over here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll say, I'll say. You would be in trouble no matter where you sit. It's not true. It is true. Well, what's he doing? I'm curious. <laughs> That's why he has that on the table. <laughs> well, I hear a motion to adjourn the table. <laughs> Uh, so, so as we move into the next phase of this, to discuss uh, the discussion of economic development opportunities, a um, couple things. As as we were working through the campaign, Dave put out a uh, sent me a spreadsheet one day, and um, you know, here I am sitting on the Paulding County Airport Authority, and. Um, that, that of the three things that I do, that's the, the, the least, uh, I think, um, where I can contribute the least, I, I would say. I mean, I, so I, I don't know really a whole lot about aviation, but as a, being a member of the IBA, um, it, you, you, you translate into the airport authority as a, as, a, um, as a member. That's just part that goes without saying. But when, when they sent out a, uh, an email to me a couple of weeks ago. Um, Terry Tibbetts, our CEO, has worked very hard to bring um, an, an airplane, a, a, a good size airplane, a, a G650, is that right, Terry? To, to the airplane uh, hangar here at Paulding County, the big, the big hangar. There was, I mean, we had spent some money uh, to get that hangar in compliance, um, and th there was some heartburn about that. And, we worked through it, and then I got to see the tax bill, and they put the tax bill for that airplane in the context of homes. How many homes that airplane um, would would constitute in, in in our county? That one airplane tax bill, one ninety four, hundred eighty three. Hundred eighty three. Sorry, I was close. Uh, one hundred eighty three homes. Now, the, the, one of the things. I'm a, I'm a, in business, I'm a low-hanging fruit guy. Whenever we're moving forward in, 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 in my day-to-day -day life, I, I want to deal with the low-hanging fruit, the stuff that's easy to deal with. Get revenue moving. Um, we got this airport, and we have, we have two big problems in this county. We have a tax base that is heavily weighted to the homeowner, and our education system here is greatly affected by that because we're, it puts us into what's called a low wealth school district. Five or six of those airplanes could tip that scale for your school district and your tax bill in a meaningful way. And Terry has um, worked with David and, and Carrie over the last couple weeks to, to begin to develop a strategic plan for the next phase of the airport. And this has been contentious. The airport's been a problem uh, with, with certain parts of, uh, of the county. I think the, uh, the commercialization program is, is, um, is, has been settled and we've moved on. Um, and, and the citizens have spoken in that respect. But now we've got to determine what we're going to do with this facility because it can't sit here and collect dust and it can't stay stagnant. If it doesn't grow, it's not going to uh, be, uh, be any kind of um, boom for, for Pauley County. And guys, we've got, I mean, this is a nice airport, so we need to, we need to utilize it. But I would love if Terry and maybe Carrie and Dave would, would start this part of the uh, attracting business and expanding the tax base off by talking a little bit about what, we, what your vision might be looking forward for the airport. And I think it's important for everybody at this table to realize that this is, from a tax standpoint, 
probably the lowest hanging fruit of everything we have uh, uh, working in Paulding County. And I don't know if you would agree with me, but I think once these guys talk to you and give you, give you a, a little bit of a understanding of the, of the potential impact, Dr. Otas is going to get pretty happy. And I think there are some homeowners that are going to get pretty happy because I think the biggest gripe I heard all the way through the campaign season up until now is, is my tax, James Stokes is the least popular guy in the county right now because everybody's tax bill just came out and uh, um, and everybody says my taxes are going up, my taxes are going up. Dave's doing, a, doing all he can to reduce the millage rate and, 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 and give us some, uh, some, some relief on that respect, but, but at the end of the day, I don't know if school districts are going to be in a position to be able to do that with a 11.5% cut. So I think it's important to know what Terry and his crew are working on, and you guys need to hear it. So if I, if I may start first, and then I'll hand it off to Terry. Uh, Terry uh, just to set it up a little bit to um, compare what we have here to some of the satellite airports uh, similar, such as Michael that you had at Cobb County, McCollum or Fulton County, Charlie Brownfield, or uh, at PDK. Um, at PDK, for example, and, and this is from data from GDOT as of 2010, there's a new study about to be released, but this is the best that we have at this point. It'll paint the picture for you, is that total jobs at, at PDK, 1,834, with a total economic output of 211.7 million. Fulton County. Are those jobs high-tech jobs? Are they a mix? Uh, are they a mix. They're a mix of everything from line guys to, exactly. to okay. guys that are pumping gas and guys that are repairing mm -hmm. engines, jet engines and such, so it's a total mix. At uh, Fulton County, mm -hmm. the total jobs, 1,184, with a total economic output of 158.6 million. And McCollum over at Kennesaw, 842 jobs. I know it's more than that now with uh, economic output of 112.4 million, and the last study that showed Paulding was 143 jobs at 14.2 million. Uh, but that would be an idea of what we can do with this jewel right here for the county. There is a tremendous amount of opportunity for growth here that can help the county. Uh, it, it can bring in business, like you see that plane that came in right behind you there. That's what happens every day at McCollum, at Peachtree Cabin, at Fulton County. Uh, it's the sound of business there. So I'd like Terry at this point, if you would, to talk to you about our, our strategic plan and some of the opportunities that we would like to see happen here to help us with this growth for the county. Okay. Um, so I'd like everybody to look out of this window behind you or across from you. And when I look out that window, I see the future. So what you're looking at is about 200 acres there that we call the Terminal Area Expansion Project. Uh, it's, a, it's a name that um, uh, doesn't accurately portray what that really is, and it's caused some confusion, I think, in the public. Um, but because of um, the way airports are developed and your environmental documents and everything, uh, it would be very difficult to change that name. But what it really is, is it's an opportunity to turn this into a McCollum, a Fulton County, a PDK. Uh, these other airports in our area um, would, would really cherish the growth opportunity that we have here. We're the newest airport in Georgia. Uh, we've been here 11 years now. Uh, airports tend to be very old things. Most of them came about uh, as a result of World War II. Um, they were not planned from the ground up the way this airport was. Uh, so we have the benefit of some initial planning that went on in the 2004 to 2008 period when Blake Swafford was leading the, the airport authority and the development of this airport. Um, and I joke about walking out across the field over here and tripping over fiber optic cable conduit that's buried in the ground and the various um, things that have been <coughs> pre-planned into this airport for growth. Um, but the bottom line is, uh, as David said, the sound of business behind us that pulled in, uh, Walmart, Costco, uh, y'all all know about the Walmart um, uh, medical facility that went into their uh, 120 store. It was the prototype for all of the nation. It was 
uh, kind of the view of the future. And one of the reasons why Walmart selected that as their prototype was their uh, familiarity with this airport and the, the ability to get an executive from sitting in Little Ark, Arkansas to, uh, to that facility in less than an hour. Um, and they've got five um, Walmart and Sam's Club properties within a 15 minute drive of here, three in Paulding County and two in Polk County. And we see them all the time coming through here and that's the sound of business. But we are currently uh, at capacity for the airport as built out today. Every hangar's full, every office is full, um, and many of you know that we're just now finishing up the uh, ground floor of the office building that was built by the IBA about six years ago and set empty for a very long time. Well, that's um, about a month away now from being finished and uh, is gonna be fully leased the day it opens. Um, but if we could get this terminal area expansion project going here, uh, that opens up 25 new hangars the size of the one that we have over here in, the, in our corporate hangar and we now have plans for 40 T hangars uh, which brings just a huge tax base to the county and another reason for high-end companies to relocate here so Terry I think it's important um, to, to note that the county doesn't have to build those hangars we just have to get the dirt ready we can, we can work private partnerships to, to build the big hangars. There's, and, and the Air Force Authority, if, if we bring a, a Walmart in and they build their hangar here to park a plane, um, it, it goes on a land lease with the airport, and, and that'll be determined at a, at a point in time. And, and over the time of that land lease, that company will pay property tax on the hangar. That's, and they'll pay, and property, and they'll pay property tax on whatever they park inside it. And, uh, every year through that land lease, when that, when that lease is over, that hangar belongs to the airport. So three things are happening. You're collecting property tax on the building, you're collecting, pro collecting property tax on the airplane, and you're strengthening the airport's balance sheet for the future. So, And then the fourth piece, you're growing the economic base in the county, because whatever that airplane is here doing, it's growing economic activity here. And, and, and so I think it's important as we present these things to the public that everybody understands um, what we're trying to do in a clear manner so there's not misunderstandings and we don't get citizens in an uproar and, and, and people, because if anybody hears the word commercialization, it's going to come off the rest. That's not what's being discussed by this airport. What's being discussed by this airport and its future is how do we support economic development and bring good pay high-paying jobs to Paulding County residents that live and work in this county. And that's, I think, what everybody wants. And yes, there'll be some airplanes flying in and out, in and out of here, but it's not going to be somebody putting a ticket booth in downstairs. It's going to be corporate guys. And I, we have 10,000 acres sitting right over here, and I would love to see our county with, with a plan to, to build an airport industrial park, to build a, a, a servicing facility for an Amazon or a FedEx or a UPS as city of Atlanta has to gather space downtown for their expansion of, of commercial traffic those businesses are going to have to go somewhere we have a unique opportunity here is as Terry says we're, we're the newest airport with the most land to deal with out of anybody in the state is that a fair that's fair yeah so so if if we're Doing our job the right way as the airport authority, we have to leverage that and, and do it soon. And we have sewer <coughs> right on the edge of the property out there and the capacity to service whatever may come. Yeah. Which is <laughs> huge. <laughs> well, I think one thing, we've had plenty of work done on expansion, and our own citizens stopped it. Got to remember. Well, they, we did that because they stopped it because they thought it was going to be commercialized. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've had some real <laughs> nice work done out there. Yeah. It stopped. It's like this was, it was about talking about uh, alignment. There's two co sponsors to this airport, and neither one can operate without the other one. It's the Border Commissioner and the Airport Authority. So we're integrated now, working together. Uh, and that's the way it's supposed to be, that's the way it's set up by the FAA. 
Dave, I just want to thank you, you and Dan both, first of all, for trying to wrap up um, Dave and David and Terry's input on the aviation side. I appreciate what you guys have done with this. I think this is great. One of the greatest things I've seen as far as a collaborative effort. These boards, uh, everyone's busy and has enormous schedules to maintain. So it's really, really encouraging to see this many people be able to carve off a day to get together. So I appreciate it. Um, yeah, aviation is certainly, I think, it's an incredibly unique economic development uh, uh, tool. I'm not an economic development guy, I'm an aviation guy. But, but I know for sure, I've seen what aviation can do, has done in communities, has done for families from the standpoint of jobs, and it's enormous. Uh, aside from the <clears throat> little, you know, down the slope and the pandemic challenges we've had recently economically, uh, you know, it's it, in the next 20 to 25 years, the aviation industry as a whole will hire more people and be, be looking with filling more jobs than it probably has in the last 65 to 70 years. So I tell all the young people that I run into, you know, high school graduates and now becoming graduates, there's never been a better time to go into the aviation industry. And there are hundreds of different career fields, not just pilots, but aviation uh, technicians to dispatchers to global operations specialists to, it just goes on and on. And these are good jobs. Great, generally great paying jobs and very stable uh, operations. So, so the need is enormous for jobs. So, um, looking at aviation in the state of Georgia, uh, somewhere to the tune of fifteen billion dollars to the state's economy. That's incredible. I've always thought, as I've been blessed to sit on this board and be a part of the airport authority, I've always thought there's no reason why Pawnee County, with this enormous asset we were given by it, they can't have just a little piece of that fifteen billion dollars to go into. So that's always been my drive to do, to do the work that I get to do. Is that why can't we why can't we fit that into our county and have a little bit of that to, to, to offset our tax base and bring and enrich our county and its citizens in a way that, that is really um, really really good. So um, to me, airports do one do something that no other business or economic development type uh, effort can do. And airports connect lines of commerce. They connect businesses and they connect people. Now, globally. So, if you have an airport, our size, a regional size airport, um, it can connect businesses from all the way in intercontinental across the country. So, just like this customer that flew in this morning, and I'm not exactly sure yet who this is, but I haven't seen them before and I'm going to find out. But they're here, like David said. So, they're here for a reason. And the reason they're here is because we have an airport that is nice is a facility that can handle that jet. They're so, all gas is cheaper to come And they're going to walk. <laughs> <laughs> and before they leave, and I venture to say, and I think it's a Global Express, David, I'm not sure I haven't, haven't taken I a good look yet. But uh, before they leave, they're going to probably buy somewhere in the tune of five to eight hundred, maybe somewhere maybe 500 gallons of gas. So that's just one airplane. So fuel cells are huge at an airport. Um, once you get the ability to house airplanes, the tax base is enormous. Like I said, five hundred thousand uh, dollars tax base per year on one airplane. Now that's a pretty good sized jet airplane. But transfer that back to even the smallest airplane. That's maybe, let's say, an average cost of one hundred twenty thousand. Small single engine airplane. You're still talking ten grand a year in applicable taxes. That's one aircraft. One. We have a list now, a waiting list for owners of aircraft owners that want T hangers of two hundred people. No, it's about thirty. Well, that, that was the, that was the other thing I wanted Terry to, to, to yeah. hit on because he did a good job of that. You pre-leased all the space in the office building before you built it out. My bet is is we're going to be able to pre-lease as many hangars as we want to build as we can yeah. put, and and then there's no there's no worry. You know, at the, at the end of the day, we know that the yeah. money coming in is going to take care of what it should. Yeah. And to that point, we're on the doorstep of this opportunity. Let me step back and talk about the other airports that I mentioned. They're all landlocked. They have no ability to grow. That's PDK. They have, there's no other room, no other real estate. Um, McCollum, Fulton County just finished the north side. Same thing, pre-leased everything. Had it, uh, it, it started construction, but it's all spoken for. <coughs> so we have 10,000 acres that you just mentioned. We have this great opportunity waiting for us here. There's no other airport close by that can take care of 
any other needs. But I think the land we already own still it gives us two and a half times the size of any of those other airports. Is, is that is my math right on that? Well, as far as growth space, certainly. Yeah. yeah. So 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 at the end of the day, you know, it, it's just we can't sit still. On it. Uh, we've got to. Now what 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 would be ideal is to get an MRO in here, which is a maintenance repair facility. And why do I mention that is because of the jobs, the, the well-paying jobs, uh, the business that it would attract for customers to bring in. But the positive side that you could sell to an MRO would be, hey, look, we've got this school that's going to be here, hopefully. Uh, and that would be just a channel for them to have employees right to them uh, for, their, for their business. I mean, that's how you can sell this, by, by looking and creating those avenues for those businesses. Terry, do you want to talk about the school and the updates on that? We've, we've probably dominated enough of the, the <laughs> meeting. We probably need to move on. But I'll be glad to answer any any questions about anything aviation-related. Well, well, does anybody related. have any questions about aviation before we move to the next topic? Dan, can I say so? Uh, a lot of things have been mentioned here. And what my fear is, if we do not act on what we have been talking about, we're going to be looking at the next, I mean, y'all brought it up, this is the last airport in recent years that has been built in Georgia. The one prior to that, I think, was Thomaston. Look at Thomaston and look at all the big boxes around it now. And also, as far as being landlocked, look at one that is going up right now in Griffin. And it's, going, it's close enough to the Atlanta area that it's going to start drawing things from us if we do not act on it. That's what you're going to be seeing. You're seeing another one down in St. Mary's that's having to move because of the marine base, of their submarine base. But you're going to be seeing things like this. They're going to be coming up. And we've got the opportunity right here. You mentioned this jet behind us. That's an economic development prospect. These people do not come in driving on, riding on the Greyhound bus. They come in to a facility such as this right here. And we cannot let that go by. We've got to take advantage of that. Well, also, in attracting business and expanding our tax base, we have more. Uh, it's been mentioned already the acreage on Bill Cruz Parkway, 127 acres. And around the Costco location, by the way, it's going vertical now. And there's an additional 46 acres there. But back to you, Michael, if you have any, any other thoughts on this particular bullet point. I, well, I, I can just share my, my past experience in Cobb County. Um, being a, certainly an asset for growth and attracting um, companies. Um, there are at least four or five. Stacy, we will talk about your goals, what you guys have got in the pipeline, and how you're working between the chamber and the EDA. Um, well, the chamber at one time had a great partnership with the economic development uh, department to work on business retention expansion, going out making industry visits. 
find one. I have we touched base on that, but we really haven't been able to get together to solidify our plan to partner going forward. Um, I know his uh, history in Cobb is to have a lot of engagement, not only with the chamber but with the local leadership. So I'm sure that that's something that, that we'll be working on going forward. I'll just add on to that. Uh, we did something called business walks in, in Cobb. Assemble a team of, of chamber staff, um, city staff, um, other economic development staff that would go out. We probably had 25 people all told that we go out in teams and meet with um, individual businesses and um, sit down with them and do a, a survey and just talk with them about their experiences in doing business and traveling. Um, covered a number of, of topics from how is, it, how is it to do business in Cobb? Um, what are some of your challenges? Where are things like transportation, public safety, um, your permitting process is difficult. Um, what can you do to help us get through that process? And so I would envision us at some point um, down the line uh, doing something similar called business walks here in Pauling. Uh, we could do it by commission district, we could do it by city, um, and you can predetermine which businesses you want to meet ahead of time, schedule a time, and then four people go out and just four or five people go out and meet with them and talk with them about um, what, their, what their experiences are like. We found that feedback to be real helpful in terms of modifying our development review processes. There, there were things we thought we were doing great, and uh, <coughs> people said, no, not so much. And so it, it's good sometimes to look, uh, look at yourself critically and constructively, and then you share that feedback with the EMT. <coughs> share that feedback with public safety, you share that with water systems so that people are aware of that, of that sentiment that's out there in the public. And hopefully you come up with strategies that will address that, those concerns. I also want to add, you know, of course, my recommendation for as part of our workforce development committee that also involves the school district and that, you know, a key priority with our college career academy and everybody working directly through the economic development <coughs> James, would you like to talk a little bit about what the project you guys are working through? Well, um, some of the things you said on the today, uh, as far as the county, uh, we're trying to work on uh, the city, talk about for uh, this tape hall. Things that we're in discussion about as far as with, uh, bringing uh, prisoners back to Fulton County. Um, we were talking about uh, transferring our dispatch, not one one over to, uh, to one location for the county instead of being split up like it is right now. Uh, so there's a, those two different things that are going on. Also, as far as with different properties that we have close by the city, that uh, we have the land right there by the old library that we're looking to do something. Right now, it's in the county. Uh, we also have the, the Helping Hands uh, building, which is right there, located in downtown in Dallas, which uh, is right in the area where our, our newest LCI uh, study has been done. And so, we're in negotiations of what to do with that. Uh, we look forward to possibly doing some joint uh, projects for the county in that area to help improve the structure where the courthouse is and that new corridor that's came through there. Uh, so there's a lot going on uh, as far as what we want to accomplish uh, in the city of Dallas, especially in, in our downtown district. Uh, we are in a uh, dire need of economic boost there. Uh, so we look forward to, to working with you, Michael, on, on that aspect of it. Uh, everybody said they want to see downtown become a viable area you got to have the people to sustain it also. Uh, but everybody wants a restaurant. <coughs> Somebody wants some place to go. So, you know, th those are things that we're looking at. How, how can we attract that into our downtown area? Uh, so part of the LCI program, uh, how we're going to redevelop. What is the LCI area. program? Uh, Livable Centers Initiative. It's just a, a, a team year plan that we have a study done of what we can do as a city to improve our our, 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 our town. Uh, but we also got on there too. 
be so accomplished for you know, the bridge and all that. So you might breeze the bridge. Yeah, we're 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 we're, we're looking, hoping to be able to do a bridge over 278 that connects downtown Civil Common Trail to downtown, which connects all the way over to the library to serve that park. Um, we want a bridge versus a tunnel. I know there's been a discussion of the tunnel too, but uh, we would rather have a bridge. If we feel that that would be we get more bang for our buck because it'd be a nice direction going across the uh, the 278. So do you feel like you can build businesses around, like, kind of like this belt line does down in Atlanta, around that downtown part of the track to be able to draw folks in that way? Right. Yeah, is that the plan? Yeah. In the, in the comprehensive plan, in Colorado County Comprehensive Plan, um, it was noted that Silver Common Trail brings about 600,000 people a year up and down the trail. Um, part of the goals are was to bring those people into Dallas. We have a barrier from the trail in Dallas, and that is 278. So, you know, to bring a family of however many on bicycles across 278, you want to make it as easy as you can. So we looked at how can we do that. And so a bridge is what we came up with, and we uh, applied it uh, ARC and GDOT for a grant. Um, we are on the stiff now to have a study done for that. Um, so uh, we'll participate in that and they look find where the best place to put the grid. And so that will bring, hopefully, we'll be bringing visitors on the Silver Cumber Trail to be visitors of the city of Dallas. That's, that's our goal. I'll just find some questions about your house I'm sorry. Uh, one second. I just want to add, sitting on a trailhead at the chamber, how much traffic we get coming in to just stop and answer questions. There's nowhere to send them to them right now. We've already passed Hiram with no signage to lead them downtown. Yeah, and then it's a long ride on into Rockmark, so. We'd love to have that trailhead be the entrance to the bridge. That's a good example of marrying the county and the city together. And that's a big boost for people coming out to the trail uh, in their opportunities, uh, options. You know, get off and uh, go to a restaurant or ice cream or whatever. Uh, that's what we can work together. The capital improvement are using some splash bones uh, for parts of the day. We we'll need, we'll need your participation. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to mention park, parking is going to be critical yes. for your downtown development. So, yes. knowing well, my experience in the city, the city of Marion. Trying to get them to see. You know, you talk about right you got to ride over that bridge. <laughs> it's a nice plan. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's uh, that uh, Confederate battlefield park. We might even talk about it. Yeah. And you know, uh, that Oak Ridge Day, the, the trailhead park there, uh, yeah, we got that nice cross bridge that goes across there that we should connect to what eventually connect the downtown area with the Sarabat Park. That's something that we've been working on for a while. But you have it, a lot of people don't even know it's there. Right. I mean, it's a great, great trailhead right now. Once it's finished and completed at this point, it's going to connect everything from the Serapide Park to downtown and then out to the, the Civil Common Trail. So. Have you guys gotten an, 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 an impact idea of how many people that will bring into the downtown area? Um, through the, in the comprehensive plan, in the last update, there was a um, uh, impact analysis done or economic analysis done. Um, and we don't know how many it will bring in, but two, three, you know, we just, we have to overcome that barrier. I mean, we're not seeing any visitors from the Sierra Cone Trail in that. Well, there's 600,000 people coming. In a year, you really, you, 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 know, you should see something. Yeah, that's for sure. And you won't until you make it a true destination. And we sure. honestly do have the nicest part of the trail right there, Paul and County. And we just don't have the access to, to get to our downtown areas that, that have great small businesses and hopefully local restaurants. I think it's a valid um, I think it should be a valid thought to get a number. You, you think about the number of people that come into the county on the trail. How far 
according to the county do they come? Um, it may be that they're staying more towards the cop side of that because that's where more stuff is. Now, as you go farther west on that trail, it's more and more beautiful. But if there were, as Stacy just used the key word, destination, where, oh yeah, we can go to this point and then we can go to that restaurant, or we go to this point, it's a place to lock up the bikes and we can go over here. Um, you start bringing people further, not just more people to the county, but people further into the county. Um, and it, it, it's a significant, I think, a significant option um, that could carry, carry some weight that you're talking about. Bridge and crossing to Sydney. Just it, something else. I think we need to think outside the box with this overnight accommodation because you do have those people who are coming in from Alabama or coming in from the far side of Atlanta and to, to have some type of overnight accommodations and I know the county still has some property right there on the trail some type of, of area to be built to allow and accommodate that it, it is not a missed opportunity because nobody's doing it. That, that, bridge, that bridge would be phase three of a project that we have had been going on for years in Dallas. Um, the first phase was a, a trail from our Orphan Brigade Drive, which is uh, behind the Sun Trust Bank, and it goes and crosses over Griffin Creek with a 300 foot bridge over the wetlands there. Phase two is a trail that goes from Chattahoochee Tech sidewalk system we're putting a bridge over the old 61 route over the railroad and come in and it'll use our sidewalk system and then hit that phase one bridge and then we'll build new sidewalks across the city of Dallas battlefield and come out in Sarabat Park which has the pool in it. So it'll connect from the Chilcomin Trail to our pool area and, and park. So, I mean, it's a you know, it's, it's a project we've been working on for a long time to try to draw people in and, and hopefully you know, have some people visiting the park and the pool. Does, does the LCI contemplate any, uh, any new residential? Uh, there, yes, there is. There is components of, of residential and infill and, you know, um, purchasing and demolishing any you know, dilapidated buildings, houses, and things like that. So, yes, yes, there is. And we need that to support the downtown. Mm -hmm. Especially restaurants that they don't want to watch lunch time and, and dinner and breakfast possibly as well. So you've got a market right there that you create with residential uses. But you go beyond just what you can attract off the trail. So we're we're learning that stuff. So we need you to help us <laughs> create and, and push it forward. So. Well, you know, and really it's just we've got to throw the dollars, but it's building all this stuff. We're creating the environment for the you know, investors to come in and the businessman. I've been here for 24 years in Polk County. I have nothing but praises to say. You know, dealing with the county, city, city hire, multiple locations. Uh, I know, you know, had, you know, different issues that we've had in the city of county. It's really and, and, and tell you the truth, the majority of the time when I went down to figure, to figure it out, it wasn't as much as the county, it was the state, the Department of Health, or something like that, that they was having issues with. You know, but it looked bad upon to the county or the city, uh, or the fire marshal deal, or something like that, such as the restaurant in the city of Dallas, you know, that more the fire marshal deal than you uh, But as we, but as I was running, uh, also for office, the main reason I did run is because Earl kind of uh, said earlier we was being bypassed. This county was being bypassed because of the, uh, the issues that was going on at the time, and that's why I decided to run because I got I didn't want to see Baldwin County be bypassed. I love it. I grew up here. I want my kids to love it. And I want them to grow up. But but for us to create an environment so that people will want to get off the you know, who, who's going to come in and spend millions and millions of dollars and do a big huge piece that I can envision it right there in the city of Dallas or even the city of Hiram or the south of the track? Who's going to do that if they can't get to it? Or they don't fill out the county or the cities. I 
find some stuff for I, I, You know, when I say, you know, when we were redoing the bylaws of the EDO, that's what we wanted involved in, we to deal with seats and the chamber and everything, but uh, I, I wanted to, and then, you know, of course, find someone that had the knowledge. But uh, with redoing, like I said, with the bylaws of the EDO, everybody was saying, well, how are they going to benefit the seats? I don't see city lines. I see Paul County. That's why I'm so excited to see James and Frank sitting here, which we do have a third seat we always forget about. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if you knew that thing. Do we have to sit in the Yeah. I did talk to that. That street thing about Delta Lane. And you drive. <laughs> but, um, but that's why I was, like I said, so excited about the city there. When Michael's going out here to attract business, you know, I don't want him to see City of Dallas, City of Iowa, or just to see all the cameras. But we need the infrastructure in the City of Dallas, didn't you? You know, they got a sewer plant, you know, they got two, and they have one, three, and two, and the So we, we, we need the City of Dallas big time, City of Iowa big time. I think y'all got two or three businesses. City one or two. <laughs> <laughs> so we're team Paul and his team Paul. I'm talking about coming off the trail. I was driving by the uh, Olive Tree restaurant a couple days ago, and uh, there were five bicycles parked right up front. So obviously they came from the trail to Old Downtown Hiram to, uh, to have lunch. Uh, we've got a unique opportunity in Hiram right by the trail. What, where our trailhead is, we have a, a dog park. Across from that, we just purchased a church five acres of property there. Right adjacent to that is the Ruritan Sports Complex that was given back to the city. Uh, and we've got some plans for that. Darren, can you share some of the plans that we're looking at over there? Um, Darren, would you be so kind to introduce yourself if you were? It's okay, I, but I just want everybody to know who you are. I'm so well, Darren Allen, I'm the project, project manager and zone administrator for the city of Hiram, and apologize for being late, but I had a Contractors meeting. No apologies. Everybody's got a job. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Um, just to touch on what the mayor is talking about, we are looking at some projects that's going to improve connectivity from the trailhead at the caboose uh, to the downtown area for Hiram. Uh, one of the things I'm working on right now is doing bike share lanes on a couple of our streets. We don't have actual right of way but in a designated bike lane, but we are looking to do uh, some signage and street markings that will allow for some additional connectivity to the downtown area. Also, we met with George Power, talked with them a little bit, and their EDO uh, put together a concept plan for the Ruitan property that the mayor is talking about. And it's pretty much just a demo and rebuild it up, uh, adding a amphitheater, adding a designated baseball field and having a multi-use field, um, creating some additional parking along Seaboard Street, which is run parallel to the Surf Common Trail. Um, I've talked to Ed and Brayer with Path Foundation. He told me that doing the sidewalk connection wouldn't be very difficult, but to expand more on that would, would get to be a little bit more involved. Uh, so those are some things that we're looking at to try to get some connectivity from the Silver Common Trail down to the downtown area where the olive tree and stuff is. We keep, keep talking about the number of people that's using the trail. They're using the trail for the trail. If we're going to draw off those numbers, we've got to start putting in trailheads and connectivity and some amenities where they can see what's available. Um, we play a day, I think, play a day around that. Well, it's, we've done some signage, and I think those signs, the I signage has been done. There's great that uh, I think uh, Paul and DOT put in, and, and those have been great. But we need some signage and, and that shows, hey, this is available here. Hey, look, I can get off right here and ride 
less than half a mile to a restaurant. Uh, I'm also looking at doing uh, some bike rental kiosks stand and putting those in some locations around Iron and putting in some stands for people who can lock up their bikes if they have their own bike. Uh, kind of let the cat out of the bag on that one. But that's something I've thought. Uh, concept and I'd like to be able to have some sort of joint plan where the city of Iron, city of Dallas, Chamber of Commerce, where we have those rental stands along the Silver Common Trail where someone said, hey, I can rent this bicycle ride it down from Dallas down to Iron, I can leave it down here and I can Uber after a few cocktails and go home. So it's, there's some thoughts and processes there that's kind of well, we're at 40 and up ain't thinking that way, but I guarantee you 25 and down are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we've been working in the area of tourism to, to, to draw the interest to the trail, and we have the maps, we have a digital guide, and it'd be amazing to just literally work on an app the system. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, as part of our regional visitor information center, that's National Forest, that have 24 hour access outside of the chamber, which we now match. Um, so people are stopping, they're asking for that they want it to have developed some type of app system that showed hey if you're stopping in Hiram you're only so far away from from these opportunities and these destinations and the same way for Dallas I mean that, that's imperative again I know the term's been used to uh, legally pickpocket even a portion of the travelers that are utilizing that trail what it would in economic impact that would really have <laughs> Hey, you'll send me about those bicycles. The thing about those bicycles is how much money some of the nicer ones. So, so to kind of bring this back uh, for you two guys, and I, this is a question I had, uh, and Brian sort of touched on it. Um, the, the the restaurant in Dallas that had such a had, had such a hard time getting open, and you know there was a lot of misinformation about how that all went down, but. Importantly uh, enough, Dave and his crew have, have streamlined permitting online. Have you guys thought about working with the county to possibly um, work through that same system or together? I, and I don't even know if that's possible to do, but, but to get permitting online and make it easier for businesses to, to get that information and move their projects forward? Had, 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 is there any kind of thought process behind that with you guys and I don't mean to put you on the spot or, or anything like that but we're working in a combination right now with the Public County Board of Commissioners as well as the uh, Dallas has been part of the discussion the Board of Education has as well in a total revamping of the development codes for the county. Uh, sitting on the Planning Commission I have the opportunity to see both what's happening within the county and what's happening within the city and We've always had a good working relationship as a city manager with Paulding County. As I said, most of our permitting actually goes through their department for development. Um, is there a, a which I, which I understood? I just I, I'm just kind of teeing it up because I want everybody to hear, like all, all the people that wouldn't normally know what you just said. Uh, you know, I, I think it's important. You know, the, the, the public's going to see that. So if they understand that they're working through the same system, that, that you know, and it and it's easier now. Well, and the process of rewriting something of that nature, meaning you know, Chairman Carmichael has a, a large ordinance book directly in front of him, and the zoning ordinance and development codes of itself is twice what he's got in front of him alone, and that's not mentioning probably the other set of ordinances that he already has. So the 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 task is. Not daunting, it's just laborious. Um, but the idea is to try to take the complex and to simplify it. Specifically because we want it to be a place where someone wanting to establish a business in my part, particularly in Hiram, but also in Palm County, so that they can have a healthy and vibrant economic community, is to make it more expeditious for them to work, live, and play in our home. Um, so it's it, prior to the pandemic coming. Um, I think we're well on our way to start, you know, having some, some you know, more intense meetings and opening it to the public. Um, but I don't know exactly where we are at this point in time, um, only because we're still on a break from it. Um, from the well, I, I just, I think it's, I think it's important for, the, for the citizens of the county to really to understand that that exercise is happening. That that 
that the officials are working through the process to make it easier and for the businesses online to come application to call. And permitting process has been a kernel of what we're discussing at the center of making it easier to do business and trying to make it more expeditious. Mr. Chair. Art. Did you did you get introduced to Doug? I did. I, I did. Remember. I know Kimmy Lane and I I can tell you all about it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but since we kind of moved to that that direction there, I, I did want to say thank you to this board of commissioners. Uh, we have been, as Jody had mentioned, working on updating our development standards and zoning standards. And to uh, the main approach was to make it more business friendly, make it easier to use. Uh, they're difficult right now. Uh, we've been working on that over a year, and we're getting much further into it. But there was, I, I thought, just off the top of my head, there's like three approaches. One is that you have a new type business that's showing up out there. We've been monitoring it for, for several years now. Is online shopping. We'll drive down the road or even on Hulsey Town over here, and you're going to run by Amazon Prime. And so we're looking at this. I'm not going to go into all the detail, but the main thing was we want to have new opportunities and zoning uh, classifications that's, a, that's toward e-commerce and uh, logistics. Uh, Fulfillment center should in particular. Exactly. And for this new type of business cause, folks are ordering everything right here and they right. got enhanced over COVID. And guess what? They're going to fly their stuff in exactly. to those fulfillment centers right here. Exactly. And that's the important part. That, that and so that, that's been a huge focus and, and we appreciate that direction. And the thing is, is we've also, Jody, is online permitting. Uh, we had to, we were already moving in that direction for the past year. Uh, it's been a, a huge focus to get us uh, to where it's really business friendly and we're e-commerce. We're going to promote and ask for, we're going to get e-commerce in. We need, we need to be e-friendly. And uh, just to do the, uh, have the efficient review and approval process is, is huge. Uh, we did a lot of permitting online in the past few months. Uh, we're doing a lot of plan review online. But uh, we are moving forward with that. And I just want to let everybody know that will be something that's coming up mm -hmm. for 40 years over with uh, a unified development code that's uh, much user friendly business. It, it, it would be great, I don't know if Michael even has the handwritten for this, but to, to have some input into that process just based on it. Yes, I'm on he is. He, mm -hmm. we, the whole time the county was, buildings were shut down, we continued every Thursday with our, our afternoon ordinance update and develop uh, meetings. Amazing how much work uh, you were able with, to get done. With Skyping <laughs> and, and uh, conference calls. Yeah. And uh, so my point is a tremendous help, and everything is to just like we're all on the same team is to support right. the economic development part of it from for uh, where it's he's got all the tools and information right there. The first focus is commercial industrial design. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah, the true yeah. challenge with all of that too exists in how rapidly the economy. And it's not just that it is changing now, it is always evolving. True. And everything, you know, the set of uh, development codes and zoning codes that we're currently working under were developed originally in 1998, 1997 time frame. And the reason they haven't been modified to date, other than edits and amendments being added to it, is because of how challenging it is to capture what's currently going on. And the ingenuity of those wishing to start businesses and do business is spectacular in that we're going to put all of this in a book and within two weeks somebody's going to propose something we haven't even considered. So the the malleability of the document needs to be such that we can quickly go back and make changes as as it changes so that it remains a, a current living, breathing document. Living, breathing document. Part of our LCI study update, a five-year update, uh, after that's completed, we've got an agreement with the company to revamp our zoning ordinance uh, suggestions to revamp it. Um, it is antiquated. You know that about it. We got the district that doesn't make sense. But um, having the online capability really showed out during this pandemic. You know, everybody can 
still do what they need to do online. We really didn't miss a beat in Dallas. Um, but once we get the zoning ordinance revamped and all, and our um, permitting process, then, you know, I, I don't know that, that Hiram and Paulin and Dallas could all be one, but my home would have to deal with three, you know, if he goes and shows a company, you know, here's a building in Dallas, here's their permitting process. As long as he knows our process and we're in good communication with him, you know, he has all the information of all of our buildings and, you know, what needs to be released out or sold or whatever, just to make it easier for him to, to make it easier for somebody to, to go through the permitting process. Yeah, I realize it's a little pie in the sky to think that everybody's going to be exactly on the same sheet of music. But it's, it, 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 as much of the underpinning as we can get on the same page mm -hmm. is, is going to make that the, the difficult pieces or the, the minutiae that we have to deal with based on each location mm -hmm. a lot less to deal with if, 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 if the big parts are uh, uh, underpinned together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And a, another area of heightened technology and um, yeah. what's What's the future? And here, I, I'm out of irrigation community with FAA and, and all. If the carries aware of the restrictions uh, on drone technology, <coughs> and uh, Michael and I have had some conversations with uh, Matt Pizzelli, who's going to have one of the new office spaces with a company called Carbon Development. And um, we've uh, had some discussions already about trying to attract a drone company in here. Because you have to, you can't just land them out in the pasture. You can, but it's uh, against the FAA rules. And you're going to have to land the drones even uh, at an airport like this. Uh, and a lot of these deliveries, you know, how many years from now? Five years? Eight years? Ten years? Uh, you know, won't be from the Amazon van. Yeah. <coughs> They'll be dropped in vertically. The last mile is going to look a lot different. So we're about close to lunch. It seems like yeah. a reasonable break time. Everybody want to take 10 minutes and use the facilities and then we'll have lunch brought in in just about 10 minutes and uh, we'll get back to it. I think we'll, are we going to work through lunch? I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Um, we'll do sandwiches from the calisters. So, so take a break. Take a break. Yeah. I think we left off with <coughs> County City Chamber. Mutual goals, partners, and shared, uh, shared property. Who did I? So we got to uh, James, uh, Frank, did we get you on that? We did. Who did I miss or did I miss somebody? Um, is there any, does anybody have any specific projects and or developments that they would like to talk about? Uh, Michael, would you just kind of give everybody a 5,000 foot view of the um, product of the property you can call that and go through and kind of where it's at. Sure. The um, IBA purchased about 120 acres of the bill at, at Lair Group. Um, we are in the process of, and I believe sewer is not there, but we are. So, so we did uh, agree to. Uh, pick up half of the tab for the IBA is going to pay half the tab and the county is going to pay half the tab to get the sewer <coughs> to the property um, and we're going to work on uh, Michael uh, has been tasked with now directly uh, before COVID-19 hit we had interviewed one property development company um, we're going to interview a couple more that he now has uh, previous relationships with from Cobb County uh, and give them a shot to take a look at it, but um, he can do <clears throat> he can do anything from a mixed use development up to uh, uh, as much as 400,000 square feet in one of the locations of, of heavy industrial warehouse space. So um, the, the property's in good shape. Uh, it's fairly level. It's not going to take a ton of ton of uh, uh, prep. Uh, Brad expressed to me that that would be millions of dollars, but in the grand scheme of things, I think. Um, we feel like we'll, the IBA feels like we'll be able to do very well 
in the return on the investment for the taxpayers and give Baldy County a, a, a pretty nice piece of property in which to work with and, and to draw some meaningful commercial development into the county. Um, there is some contiguous property to that uh, that could be gone after as well, but I think once this project sort of takes shape, it'll develop the, the property around it will begin to develop. So the, There'll be a kind of an all, uh, you know, a rising tide that raises all boats effect if, if it goes well. And we're not going to, um, you know, in the past we've, uh, at least it's been my experience that we've gone through the process and, um, and it's been to some degree ready fire aim uh, on some of these projects. But we're going we're to hire a, a development company that's going to put a plan together. That plan is going to get executed uh, once it's approved. And and frankly, um, I'd like to get everybody's commitment to come back here next quarter and by that point in time have something to present to, to, to this group of folks so that they can see what's going on with that specific project. Uh, the other specific project that I, I want to talk about is the Dallas Industrial Park. Um, we've got that property, and we've got to decide as a county uh, two things. One, do we want to spend the money that we need to, to develop that uh, infrastructure to bring businesses to that park, or do we want to uh, just sell it to a, a, a developer or somebody who could develop the property? Um, we have the property appraised, we know what it's worth now. Um, so. The IBA and the EDO will be working together uh, in the near future, along with the Board of Commissioners, to try to figure out what we're going to do to finish uh, uh, disposing of uh, the Dallas Industrial Park from the IBA's books and getting it on the tax rolls in some meaningful way. Um, I think that's the only two. Michael, did I miss nope. anything? No, nope, that's it. <coughs> what is you with Dallas? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, if we get these pad ready or the developer or whoever comes in with their plan, that's part of their plan. Michael? <coughs> we, 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 we can get these pad ready. Okay. Yeah. So they're not ready to move forward. For okay. um, <coughs> this particular project, Harold, to answer your question, could be, um, we may look at it two ways. <clears throat> we may look at it, sell it to them and let them handle it, um, whereby we would make a, a, a turn on the, on the, on the a profit on the dollars that we did fly back into the EDO to, for further economic development and, and possibly other things. Um, or we could spend the money and pad ready, depending on, and, and that, it's all just going to be a function of cost of dollars available and what the best use of the, the responsible use of the tax dollars are. Another factor in that is with the city of Dallas and that being part of the new town designation. And it's something we need to talk about, James, or talk to the board about. Uh, how, how we get the new town designation released from it so that anybody who bought it here wouldn't have to uh, accommodate that requirement. This is the old district. <laughs> all those streets. I, well, I, meant, down west more. I meant for you. The way the way some of our overlays read, it is visible. Right. So the part once you turn left into the gate area, it's not visible from Memorial Drive. We look at it closer. And it's not a big deal if we have to work with whoever we bring in to make sure that the visible portion meets the requirements. Mm -hmm. We need to understand what that looks like so that Michael and his team can can effectively um, uh, move it, you know, move that project forward. Which that's a challenge. Part. Again, <coughs> sure. Well, the the. Uh, the appraisal came back at its best and what is it called? What is it? Best and highest and best use as residential. Yeah. 
Anybody want to talk about mixed use and any projects? I think we'll talk a little bit about that, but is there anything specific that anybody wants to address with the mixed use side? You guys? <clears throat> no? I think it's a much needed thing as far as an attraction to come get somebody off the trail. Which is, <coughs> again, it's not the government's job to build it, but it's just, you know, create an environment. There is even between us and the building city of Dallas in the gray area, even the site at that deal park. You know, I'd like to see somebody coming in and developing a big piece, piece the corner of Buckhine Highway 278. County where, uh, where Bentwater and Seven Hills are, you know, the school district owns a piece of property on the Seven Hills connector. Is that right? I think they have two pieces of property. Two pieces of property. And, I, you know, I, maybe, maybe there's a discussion there that we possibly look at taking that off of the school board's hands and figuring out a way to put some mixed use in that part of the, uh, in that part of the community, too. I know you guys are going to be looking at possible needs for another elementary school, so there there could be some partnership happen with the school district and the IBA and the EDO to, um, to to maybe acquire land back and put you guys in a position to not have to come out of pocket to acquire the the land that you might need for that future development of that school. And, and of course, that's something that you know that I have discussed with the board. Sure. Um, we have, uh, we're always open to this. And, uh, the biggest concern we have in the northeast corner of the population is, you know, what the impact that we potentially have on creating more. But, you know, that's, that's I, I wouldn't be a fan of building any houses on that property. I think we would want to completely uh, segregate the for, for mixed use commercial, uh, you know, restaurant, um, nightlife. Right. something to that effect but very specific in that area and <clears throat> figure out how then at that point you can utilize that to tie together with with Dallas downtown Dallas and downtown Hiram as uh, uh, you know, draws to the county for, for those age groups <clears throat> Full of rock, right? <clears throat> well, we've had a board, and that's not the indication that we have. Oh, okay. <laughs> we did all that pre pre purchase <coughs> at engineers. Of course. The jail. The jail. <laughs> and I think this piece of Rock that's sticking out of the ground, didn't show me there either. That's right. So it's hard to go. I know there's a piece of property right there. Who wants to tackle the sewer? <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> well, just for informational purposes. We've tackled two sewer projects, one at Bacon's Bridge and Ridge Road. 
as the current board, um, and uh, we extended the what was going to furnish Greystone extended over the Nebo Road. We don't have it done yet, but uh, the same crew that's in there doing, doing the Lick Log Creek and the one that's Greystone, we're going to keep the same contractor in there and bring it on the, the Nebo Road. So that'll some of this land that we've already been talking about will go three times in price. I, have, I think is a fair, a fair uh, conservative move. Also, it's assuming Right now, it's going to copper mine. Well, that takes care of it. Takes care of the Kroger problem. The, the, their septic system, that, and we keep we keep that major retail and grocery store in the county. They don't move as a result of that. I think that's important for folks to know. And by working working with that developer, and uh, we we got about three three and a half million dollars to sue for like eight hundred thousand. What we put into it, so I mean, you know, that's part of the development. We'd be proud of. Uh, we've got a, another team and gym, it's like Baker Street exited but, uh, called CEDAR Commercial Development uh, in what's the A stand for? Uh, review team and assessment yeah and they evaluate that it's a group of department heads that will evaluate a potential expenditure by the BOC, by the Board of Commissioners for sewer um, extension or upgrade. Um, but it evaluates how many employees can be brought in, how much revenue can be brought in by, by using uh, the capital funds that we have available for those locations. <coughs> In the case of uh, Baker Bridge, uh, Ridge Road, the, uh, the return on investment is 18 months uh, until it's all paid for. Everything after that's great. So we're, we're looking at different locations like that to see if it's We've been playing catch up with sewer um, because back when they were doing so much development, they, they weren't bringing commercial and sewer in uh, to balance it out. So we're playing catch up. Do we have a, a sewer plan that we're working for on there? Yeah. And what's that look like? Uh, naming the different cases <coughs> and, uh, and, you know, uh, trying to do more work with the school system, of course, but. <coughs> Some of the issues we have, we have more pump stations than we need. Yeah. Because there's actually sewer lines is not complete. You got basins pumping into other basins, uh, which is not part of the plan. Uh, you know, I mean, I've had Lori many times to kind of get a nail down the number where it would really take to get our infrastructure up far. That number is huge. Really yeah, but we've got to start buying it off at some point. Right. It's all right. right. Eating hell for the, a little bit of the time. <coughs> you pump the sewer from one basin to another and you're back to the wrong plant, you know, you just, I think you got 40-something pump stations in the county or something like that. We have to maintain them. They wear out like other moving. And then they had an issue with that sales in New Hope. Where there's a smell a lot of the time because the sewer is <coughs> sitting there a little bit too long in the lines. It's going to not getting where it needs to be. Anytime you pump it, it turns it up to. Uh, right. We have in our sewer master plan, we have a pump station elimination plan uh, to require developers to add a little more and run a gravity line.
expansion of our sewer treatment plant so we would have more capacity uh, and we can expand one more time another 1.5 million gallons a day uh, at our plant so we have capacity. Does the other city have that capability? We do not have sewer. We, own. we build sewer and get it for the county. <coughs> they charge us right back for it. I didn't say we were going to solve everything. <laughs> I was wondering where that was going to come <laughs> There is a location, though, that we're focusing on. Uh, it's a strip mall across from the library. A little bit to the north. Yeah. The sewer system uh, that was installed for the city of Hiram and then dedicated to Paul was built. The blue station was placed at the southernmost point of downtown uh, with a leg built out going south for properties uh, for Morningside Drive, basically. Uh, of course, that's where the leg ended in the project that uh, Laurie Ashmore uh, is pursuing through the ARC, is the Appalachian Regional Commission, which is the federal designation, uh, is to extend that leg of service further south to pick up pro uh, property and commercial properties and residential properties uh, okay. along 92 leading up to Nebo Road. There'll be additional coverage. The extent of it is still based on treatment capacity and what the county ultimately decides to do with it. Anybody got anything else you want to offer about sewer? <coughs> we need more of it. Uh, but I, Michael, I don't want to put you on the spot because there are a lot of these topics that we haven't had a chance to discuss. But, uh, there's a lot you can do with companies that want to come in and buy. The extending the, the financial commitment to the yep. One of the uh, one of the assistive programs that we used in COD related to SDF or sewer development fees, um, we were able to, uh, rather than the business paying those costs up front when they're pulling the permit, we're, uh, we were able to spread those costs out over time. They don't charge any interest. But it also incentivized them to pick yeah. the right size water line to go to their food step establishment too, which I think a lot of people try to rest the tap fee by, by changing the size of the, the, the service. Yeah. <coughs> uh, from that perspective, from the city's perspective, I guess you would you charge your own tap fee, correct? <coughs> so it, it, when you guys go back, maybe discuss that with them because that's something that I think we need to, Michael needs to know, is that is that an option? You know, can we talk about tap fees and, and when he's looking at somebody to bring into your jurisdiction, uh, can, can they spread them out? You know, is that possible? It may not be financially possible in some cases. It may be a case-by-case -case basis, but if there's a willingness to work on that, I think, uh, Makes it, it makes it a lot easier to bring somebody to the table from the perspective of, of bringing them into the, into the city. Yeah. One thing in that aspect, too, just to keep in mind as another option, that may not be available to, to wait for me or such. There's ways to, say, the IBA or whoever can finance, they have they pay the board system off and then that they can as a reimbursement factor. That, 
And, and I would tell you, uh, that I can't speak to the whole IBA, but I can't imagine that, that, that there would be much opposition uh, to, to, to some, if the funds were there and it was the right you know, the project for the county that, that, that the IBA would do their part to, to help with that. <coughs> Anything else on sewer? Um, Want to address seeing the land and the growth of the airport day? Sure. So in uh, 1975, the city of Atlanta bought 10,000 acres on the, uh, what is now the airport here. The airport, we bought 163 of that 10,000 acres. It's uh, various different parcels, and I wouldn't say it's continuous <coughs> all around the entire airport. It's deed restricted and expires carry is that this year? Sure. So uh, the way things are going in the city of Atlanta expect that they would probably be looking to sell. One would guess, one would guess. Yeah. Anything else I'm missing on the property itself? So. Uh, well, <coughs> currently it's on lease to Georgia Forestry and DNR as a part of the 25,000 acre wildlife management area. But the 10,000 acres that the city of Atlanta owns uh, can be pulled out of that at any time. So if they were to dispose of the property, then they could break the lease with DNR and, and uh, Georgia Forestry, and that land could be developed. So that would uh, that would be a very large piece of property if it does come on the market for some very significant development. And what's their benefit with going with the uh, uh, DNR? They were just managing the land for the city of Atlanta um, for erosion, for wildlife um, management, for tree forestry. Uh, yeah. Well, they get a tax benefit from it. The city of Atlanta does pay tax on that property in Paulding County. Is that correct? I don't know if they do or not. I believe they, they do. do. No, I believe they do. They yeah, do. They're, they're one of the largest taxpayers. They're, they're, they're not the one. One. I've heard that a lot. That they're, the largest, they're not the largest. No, we're told it. They're about four hundred and some thousand dollars a year. The Grace home was one point one million dollars a year. People prior to even all the buildings that were doing that. So, well, there was about seven percent. So BB one just yes. BB one just <laughs> stuck themselves right into the G six fifty. Just moved right up into the top three. It sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> So, Terry and David, have we contemplated any of that property uh, uh, possibly being purchased for the airport? There's probably none of that property that directly benefits the airport other than about two acres um, that's, that's in our airspace on the uh, 3-1 departure end down here. Um, the rest of the land really should not be brought in as airport property because that greatly limits your development options. As we're seeing now with the school, it's very difficult once the airport takes ownership of the property to then dispose of it for some non-aviation purpose. Um, I would recommend that the IBA be the one who purchases any land that might be purchased off of that track. Now, can the, can the airport connect to that property? No, that's called a through the fence operation, and that is a very difficult thing to get approved nowadays. You used to be able to do that a lot. You saw a lot of air parks um, develop around airports where individual owners would be able to taxi. Uh, they technically call it through the fence, whether there's a fence there or not. Um, but the FAA strongly discourages that and makes it almost impossible for private owners. You can do it for businesses or government entities but there's a very complex leasing process you have to go through. And at this point, I think we have plenty to develop at this point. Long term, it's a different question. We have 770 acres of airport property that can be developed for airport purposes, which are primarily MROs, hangers. Um, Over and above what's already developed. No, that's our total footprint here. 770 acres. We've developed. got about 100 acres developed. So we've got five or 600 acres that we could develop. Um, 
the 10,000 acres is really more um, for industrial and mixed use. Uh, that would be my vision there, rather than airport proper. Okay, uh, everybody got a couple of things, a couple of uh, hand, or attachments to your, to your email. And I, did everybody have a chance to read these uh, when, when the calendar invite came out? The, the economic development and the economic incentives overview and review process. Um, so I, uh, I'd like Michael to just take the floor and just let's start. This, this right here is, is the meat of the order. Uh, for today, and uh, yeah, I've got the uh, yeah, yeah. we can get your copy. Get your copy. Absolutely. In fact, you can have my copy. Okay. Um, so, since since I started in, in February, uh, been working on putting together some draft economic incentive programs that would be uh, uh, an option for businesses that are interested in locating and calling. Um, what I've put together for you are, are actually five different uh, incentive programs. One is an entrepreneurship and an incentive, uh, entrepreneurship and innovation incentive program. Then there's a small business and new starts incentive program, business retention incentive program, a targeted industry incentive program, and then a, a special economic impact incentive program. Each of these programs um, have eligibility criteria, they have a, a first a purpose eligibility criteria, and then what the participant <coughs> incentive is, assuming that the business qualifies for that different program. Uh, what would come along with this too would be an actual incentive application that would be uh, filled out by the business or their representative, uh, and then they would submit that to the economic development organization, and it would be evaluated to determine its eligibility for that particular incentive program. Um, I can go through these real quickly just to kind of give you a feel. Uh, in terms of the entrepreneurship, uh, the purpose of that really is just to try to uh, incentivize those entrepreneurs, those folks that are innovative, innovators, if you will, to involve in some high skilled jobs to assist them with uh, growing their business and creating jobs. Um, that eligibility criteria is just, you know, they have to be a uh, Part of the business incubator program, uh, be a spin-off technology that may be associated with Kennesaw State, Georgia Highlands, or Chattanooga Technical College, or some other university. <coughs> they also have to agree to, uh, if they were granted uh, this incentive, have to remain in the in the county or the city um, uh, three years after the ex expiration of the uh, mandatory incentive agreement. And I think it's important to mention that. All of these programs are set up to require that the business enter into a contract, if you will, a contract that requires them to perform, uh, create some of these jobs, um, maintain their capital investment. And then there's also an annual uh, reporting requirement that they uh, provide to, to the county, making sure that those things stay in place for a predefined term that may be five years, it may be 10 years, um, so that they're that's important because of, of transparency uh, and, and accountability. Um, since we are talking incentives sometimes that have a monetary value, and it's something that's been I've utilized over on top and it's been quite successful. The other thing is that, that this process also requires is an annual report, overall report on um, a compliance report that's presented to the board of commissioners so that they know what projects um, have received incentives status is of their hopeful compliance with um, the terms of the agreement. Um, if they do not comply, let me just say this too, there's the ability to recoup the value of the incentives you know, for some reason they didn't fall the agreement. So I, I just wanted to mention that too as well. Um, the next program is just our small business and new starts program. And again, with small business, business is sort of being the backbone jobs being created, not just here in Paul, but really throughout this country, wanted to find a way to incentivize small business. Um, the eligibility criteria here is in order to qualify for this, they've got to be an existing business, um, and be a continuous operation in the county for at least a year, and they've got to be up to date on all their 
your state and local taxes and business license and need to be verified. So those are the types of criteria in order to qualify for incentives for this particular program. The incentives for this one would be access to market data, labor force data, and real estate data, coordination with the appropriate county, city, or state agencies. Um, the state also has incentives incentive that are potentially available for this type of program, and you can be a, a resource to help them co-coordinate with this uh, appropriate state department to make sure that they are uh, access those incentives as well. Um, another incentive through this program would be a liaison with the workforce training and assistance providers to make sure they've got well-trained local forces as well. And then any, any assistance with permitting, construction processes, uh, ready, set, go, and then information on other uh, local state uh, entities that can assist in the growth of the business. The next uh, incentive program is called our Business uh, Retention Incentive Program, and that's the program designed to provide uh, services and assistance to businesses that meet the specific eligibility criteria with, with the intent of keeping them here in the county. Over the years, uh, it does no good to attract these greatest corporate relocation. You've got five or six of them sliding out of the county at the same time. At the same time. So we want something that has, uh, rewards those businesses that have been here, who've invested here, uh, and want to make sure that they're the best neighbor. In terms of eligibility criteria for this program, you've got to be an existing business, you've got to be a continuous operation in the county for at least two years, uh, and then you've got to remain uh, in the county for at least three years after the agreement expires. And then here we've kind of listed what the business clusters are that can be eligible for this type of uh, business retention incentive program. Information technology, software, e-commerce, professional business services, wholesale trade advanced logistics, healthcare services, research and development, life sciences, or travel uh, jump to the next program is sort of our targeted industry program. Uh, this is again provided uh, provide services and assistance to businesses that meet certain sort of eligibility criteria. And again Identify targeted industries as those being uh, aerospace and things manufacturing, information technology, professional business services, also trade, healthcare, research and development, life science, and travel and tourism. There have been added at least 25 new jobs to be eligible for this particular incentive program. Paid average salary at least 1.25 times the county's average. So, Reason, the reason that's in there is we want to be sure you're attracting uh, the higher paying jobs, not something that's lower, lower than, than what the average is in the county. That's important, that's important because it's supposed to be good that's associated with that, people that work for a lot of buying and services and so forth. So that's why there's a requirement in there that they're actually, these are high paying jobs that are better than one. The other thing that's important about this program too is that there has to be a fiscal impact analysis to make sure that this project makes good fiscal sense for, uh, for the county. And earlier this year we invested in a uh, fiscal impact model or tool from Georgia Tech that allows staff to uh, do an analysis to determine uh, the fiscal impact associated with these types of projects and you can make, then you can make a business case that the incentives for a particular to transparency and accountability you know, in terms of structuring this program so that you're in a position to make the case that these are meaningful uh, incentives, but at the same time, the best interest of the county. And then the last incentive program is just one that's special economic impact incentive program. And this one is sort of reserved for those corporate headquarters, financial assistance, professional services, transportation distribution, manufacturing, and then emerging technologies and industries. This one, you have to create at least 100 new jobs, and 
snapshot of what the targeted industries are right now. Uh, this is a li living and breathing document, so if there are additional industries that we think uh, should be added to this, they certainly can be somewhere down the road. But um, this is sort of a, a baseline to get us started in terms of uh, incentives. Um, so we're excited about rolling these out. The other document that you got too was the uh, incentive overview and review process. I won't go through all of this, but it kind of lays out again the eligibility criteria, but more specifically, it talks about the review process and how that would flow. Um, the EDO will, will actually have the first cut in looking at the application in terms of whether or not they're in agreement or, or, or are interested in recommending that the incentives be provided. Then after that, that, that would actually be presented to the board of commissioners who would have the final um, say-so incentives um, will be um, provided to that business and then an actual contract document would actually be signed and executed <coughs> between all the parties and that would be the document that Tom would the IBA have to also approve that not under that not under these guidelines here I mean, good so uh, if you remove the step that's really what I'm getting at. Okay. now let me just say this that nothing in, in this current program contemplates any tax that's a separate, that would be a separate process that would involve, <coughs> assuming the IBA would be one of those parties involved along with the tax assessor's office. At least that's the model I'm used to in, in Cobb. Um, so there would be, a, there would be, I'm trying to remember, there's usually a, a bonds for title transaction that has to take place. That's what we've done previously, is the IBA would own the take, take title to the property, lease it back to the landowner. And we'd have to have it worked out with, with the tax assessor's office and get them on board. Exactly. Does the EDO have to prove up? Not, not that, because they're not providing the tax. Any of this doesn't have to prove No, actually, they would have. These, these four would have been Yeah, they would have to prove those. And, and, and this is what I'm hoping that James and Frank can take back to your group and at least get this piece of it ironed out and come back. And if you guys have um, concerns or if you want to make adjustments, let's y'all go directly to Michael. Get your get your concerns for those two documents on on point. And then if y'all can adopt them, we'll adopt them. The board, the IBA will adopt them. The, the and the board of commissioners can adopt them. And then we're all at least from that perspective. What I was speaking about earlier, we're all on the same sheet of music. That, can I get that commitment from you guys? And I, relationship with the chamber, uh, the, the small the number two incentive program, small business. <coughs> you and their board. Uh, you agree on that? We can't certainly can. Absolutely. You all are specialized in that area. Some of the small businesses you deal with now um, look for incentives. We're the ones they call right now prior to, to Michael uh, being in the office. Um, I mean, we don't have the funding or the capability to provide anything but directly to resources that can. Some, some of you, I was just going to mention, you talked about business walks earlier. That's a, that's a great chamber topic. That's a great, you know, state to state when you guys, those are, I mean, once we get these adopted, it, it, you know, as you're, I mean, you, can have, you can have a whole meeting on that alone. We actually have an economic development month later this year. I mean, our, our budget schedules are more powerful since have been adjusted a little bit. But one of the ones we had saved for fall was an economic development month. Um, and that's one of the things that we're going to be 
So, so we could get this. If, if we could get this all ironed out and hammered out. We could present it then. That would be. That would give everybody ample time to sort of work through whatever issues they may have. And those programs are more important now than ever for those small businesses coming off this. Let me mention something about COVID-19. I was in contact with uh, a colleague in Washington, D.C. and maybe another round of COVID-19 that was going to be We've been able to pass on anything right now to the small business development center that we partner with. Um, we as a chamber didn't qualify for, for the PPE as a pilot once we said we got the misconception out there that we get all this money and funding and we don't. The chamber got it as a distribution made to get it to on their payroll. Yeah, we we had the calls. <coughs> when are you going to give us money? <laughs> Same calls everybody else is going to get. <laughs> In addition to its development efforts, it's finally reaching a stage in its life where it has to redevelop something that already exists. Unlike Cobb, which is a little different. We were able to, we did a, a, a joint uh, referendum on five of the six cities, including the county in 2002, approved a, a local referendum that was approved by the voters. I think it was 70, 30 percent. Michael, one thing that I haven't heard you mention, <coughs> maybe somebody did, but um, the Georgia uh, Economic Development Department, uh, Chris Carr used to be uh, one of the commissioners here on the Pavlis. Do they help us with that? Yeah. Yeah, thank you for teaming that up, Chair. Uh, yes, and they absolutely are. Uh, I said earlier that uh, it's economic development is a team game. All members are very important, but I want to say the state is an extremely important partner with all of us. And uh, I do think uh, at the appropriate time that you can make a group of folks down, or oh, if not going down, um, maybe schedule a time for them to come up here to see what Pauline is about from the economic standpoint. You can do 
site tour, the site tours, share with them information about your economic incentive programs, a little bit about your vision for development in your respective communities. So that's something that certainly get put together uh, along with the chamber uh, as well. I have been talking to Taylor. Uh, I think many of y'all met her. She was our regional project manager who has just recently accepted a new position. So I hadn't heard of the new assigned rep for our area yet. But that was something we had discussed is coming in and hosting just a like welcome reception, open for business, <coughs> bus tour, and tour around the county mm -hmm. to see our assets. And what now we to bring it into our beautiful restored theater instead of a little conference room with a small screen with do a, get a video from our public information uh, unit. Uh, we got stuff archived that we can show everything in the county from the waterfalls to the airport to uh, anything you can think of. So Baker Street can help us put together. Uh, we can bring, you know, we don't have to drive them around anywhere. We can right. just sit them in the theater, feed them popcorn and coke. Well, I think they should see the industrial sites for sure, but <coughs> just get an exposure to the county. That's a fabulous idea. <laughs> Another big part, really, they know it's about the local EMC. to some folks, um, some professionals in, in that arena who build websites. Um, so I'm going to do, do sort of my own due diligence talking to a few folks that I know do good work because um, I want something that's clean, informational, uh, and then I'd love to work it obviously to everybody that's in the room here that's represented here in terms of partners. Um, so I've got about two or three companies or individuals I'd like to talk to. I say we get Wilson, Mr. Wilson, committed to a date, however far out there. Because we're talking about two different things the website and then showing them around. I think as soon as we can get a new project manager coordinated here, right. that they're our primary link to get the right people from the state level. Mm -hmm. Well, I've got a quick pause. I just wanted to point out that the airplane that just took off <coughs> was $3,500 for the airport to just sit there for a couple hours and uh, be filled up a thousand gallons worth of fuel and headed on to Maine. But uh, that, that, that's a win today for Terry's crew. Who passed in the notes? <laughs> Actually, he passed Tom a note who passed me a note who passed Tom a note. <laughs> well, I know Terry's the only guy in the room that will actually put his cell phone away and adhere to the rules. So I had to go to Tom to get to Terry. Tom's a little break for that part. All right. So, Dr. Otop, do you know how would you like to talk about number seven? Yeah. i just take a minute one. I, I just think... Thank you for the opportunity to sit around the table. Um, as a school district, I can tell you there's no bigger advocate for economic development than we are. Uh, we are the 12th largest school district in the state of Georgia. We serve over 30,500 students in 33 schools, a career academy. Uh, we're the largest employer in the district with over 3,600 employees. But what often we talk about, um, especially the time of year when budget rolls around, is the fact we're a low wealth district. So people hear that we're a low wealth district and they think, well, they kind of maybe have a connotation that we're talking about the community itself is low wealth. And, and that's far from the truth. We're a low wealth district. We're the fourth largest recipient of equalization because of the disparity between the industrial commercial digest and uh, what <coughs> others in the state have. We have such a low portion of our digest that comes from that 
that uh, is disproportionate in our case. So what happens is the state steps in and gives us something called equalization. And to give you an idea, last year we received, I believe, $28.1 million from the state. Funds that were essentially, in, in a big picture, taken from districts that do not have that disparity and awarded to Paulding so that we try to equalize the amount of dollars spent on every student in our district. Um, we received that because of the disparity in the tax digest. Um, we received 66% of our funds from the state. And to give you an idea, the average is 52%. That 18% we're talking about is really a lot of what you guys have been talking about here is just this lack of a commercial industrial tax base to support the school district. What dollar amount does that 18% uh, represent? Well, I know in terms of digest dollars, it's $2 billion. Um, but dollars to, I, I don't know that, but when you look at the gap we have in our digest, it's $2 billion that we're missing um, in terms of that level of support. But I do want to share something as well, and, and I know that our citizens um, tax is a, a huge piece in the tax burden, but I want to let everybody know that um, we are not, um, our millage rate is actually lower to the large district average in our state. We're at 18.750, and the average large district is 18.964. So I know that is a big issue for our citizens, and we certainly appreciate that, but we're not out of bounds in terms of millage rate for the Pauline County School District. Um, I wanted to share just a couple of things, and, and then I'll, I'll um, maybe throw it back to the group. But how do we support economic development in Pauline County? And I think the biggest thing that we do is the charge we have every day with our kids is to provide a quality education. Because when a business wants to relocate to a community, they want to know that the schools are good. They don't want to relocate to a community that uh, that's not the case. Our graduation rate is nearly 90% um, at this point. That's due to the hard work and diligence of students, teachers, parents, everyone working together to support our kids. But we've also looked at how we can play a role um, in supporting really our vision, which is to, for all of our students to be successful today or tomorrow. And I'm just gonna point out a few for you. One is we have a very robust, robust work-based learning program for our students where they actually go out into the community and work um, and support our local businesses. And we wanna send more kids out to businesses and we need more business to participate. The Pauline College and Career Academy is another instance of that. And we are one of the few communities that actually built their college and community program for almost the exact amount in state funds we received. Um, we wanted to do something that would not uh, cost locally, but could certainly support our kids. And of course, the college and uh, college career academy has lineman trade skills, uh, cybersecurity, megatronics, which is industrial robotics and other pieces, um, as well as a, a nursing program. So we want to be a part of the answer so that when you talk to businesses, you know that there is opportunities for their children on top of the types of magnet programs um, that we offer at Pauling County High School and we'll have it at Highland High School next year for computer science. But the question says, what is future residential growth and infrastructure support residential growth with respect to the school district? So we talked about a couple things here and one is for us, when we hear things like sewer, Sewer means to us homes, and um, it means growth coming in a way that we have to be responsive to, and we always want to be engaged in those conversations on the front end, because Eric here sitting to my right is the person who we brought on to help plan um, not only our construction and the operational aspect of our district, but if we don't know about something in, until we see Earth turn, and it makes it very difficult for us to respond to that. Um, our biggest concern right now in terms of growth is our growth is coming in one very condensed area and uh, it is taxing our resources in Northeast Paul. Um, and you know, when we look at out in this part of our community, you know, we have Pool Elementary School right down the road and it has about 450 kids. We have Ragsdale right back over here that has 500 some odd kids, but all of our enrollment overage is on the way other end of the county over here. We gotta figure out a way to address that and our voters supported us with our last floss vote. But um, our biggest thing, I, I guess, for this group is we wanna be a partner in bringing that economic development to the community.
community. We also want to be a partner in respect to the residential end. And, and thankfully, we've been added. Um, we have a seat now at the table when we're talking about um, what's happening. Chris, we talk all the time. The county and all the local municipalities have been our greatest partners. But our challenges um, are coming. Uh, the average growth of a school district in Georgia was 0.1%. We were 1.6% in terms of growth. So Paulding is a place we had the, the forum where we had the, uh, uh, the residential uh, realty market out and chamber sponsored. You know, the development costs in Paulding are less than surrounding communities, which means this is a place where developers can come and maybe actualize a little more profit. We would like to see, um, you know, Again, uh, you continue to receive our feedback, but also understand from an in infrastructure point of view, um, growth in a residential sense continues to tax um, our system. Uh, you know, we have North Paulding that has 2,600 kids, McClure Middle School has 1,500, Shelton Elementary has around 1,300, Burn Hickory has 1,100, Rustam Elementary around 900, and Abney Elementary School has over 1,300 kids, and they're all right there. I mean, they're within a stone's throw of each other. So that's where it's all coming. Um, and that's where the development is now. So I told myself I'd only talk for a minute, but just know that as residential growth um, comes, when we talk about things like sewer, we just want to continue to be at the table so we can have a better understanding of what's coming so we can plan for the future. With less money coming. With less money, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that, and that's the reality of, yes. of the situation. Everybody's facing that, but 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 you're already behind the eight ball, right? And now and, and now we're going to put an obstacle between the areas. So that's the other piece, and Dan, thank you for mentioning that. Is we're already less than others before you even start talking about a 14 percent across the board budget cut, which was the initial projection, which would have been nearly 30 million dollars for the district. Now, of course, the state is looking at Governor Kemp come back came back from 11 percent which could bring up to six million back to the district if that's approved. But that also cuts equalization, which is our way to balance that idea that we're out of balance with everybody else. So uh, we're already in a gap point of view. Steve Barnett, our CFO, calls, out, calls that our $40 million problem that we have every year, because that's basically, that, that is the difference that we're talking about, $40 million problem. I knew there was a number that you yeah. was. And I'd like everybody to know this as, as I've gotten a little bit more involved with this and understood it, that our school district does so much more with so much less. It's, it's really unbelievable to, to compare them to similar school size, similar size school districts to see the resources that those districts have, compare your graduation rates and, and your milestone rates against those other districts and see what our uh, school system does with a lot less and, and, and how we achieve more. In fact, I, I have uh, even said to several people that I believe that Holly County School District could be a, uh, a model for how people should do business in, in, with their schools. I'd just like to see our, our, our teachers have a raise. And, and, you know, they were promised that. They're not going to get it now um, and, you know, through no fault of their own. So, uh, and in order to continue to do what they're doing, We've got to take care of the folks who are educating and, and running the, 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 the school system. I mean, it just, you know, garbage in is garbage out. So, and just one last little comment. When I started teaching at Herschel Jones in 1990, uh, when they brought new teachers in, they put us on a bus and we actually drove to the 11 schools that were in Baldwin County and looked at them all. This problem we're talking about, this disparity in the tax digest, has been going on here for decades. And and if we don't have some balance, it's going to continue. And these are dollars that could be going to support our kids, to give them those advantages uh, of, that we're, quite honestly, at times not able to do. So just know that if you make an impact on economic development, what's the, what's the ripple for everybody else? It means that kids are getting more of what they need to be successful. So just think about kids when you think about economic development. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ryan, i got to ask, in order to get your office side, but when I 
I hear you saying is that sewer is not good for schools because we well, to bring more homes. Yes, that's that's when when I hear sewer extension, I think that a developer is going to now take that how many acres they have and now it's home because they're going to tap onto that sewer. Whereas you know it's much more I'm assuming more expensive and less desirable to be on a septic system. So when especially right now, if you looked at the southwest part of our community. Um, that's an area that hasn't had a lot of development lately, but when you talk about the Greystone sewer tap and other things, I start without really knowing what all that means. I think, well, does that mean some of these people are going to start developing? So, yeah. so you've highlighted. I, I, I was hoping you would hit. It. You've highlighted what I think needs to be discussed, and that is planning and zoning. And, and I don't know anything about planning and zoning, but but the common sense. Uh, uh, move forward here is to have a plan that takes the development into account in a smart way and gives the school board a seat at the table so that all of those items can be covered on the front end. And it may mean that we slow some residential development down in the county. And I know that's probably going to get, get me hammered for saying that, but at, at the end of the day, it's got to be smart. And we it can't be ready, fire, aim. Uh, moving forward because uh, we're all sitting around the table, we know what the problem is, and now we need to address it in, in a meaningful way. And, and mm -hmm. I'd like to thank Mr. Carmichael because he called me three or four, two or three weeks ago, and we had talked about how could the school district again kind of have that voice and plan and zoning. So Eric actually is the district representative, much like Brian is for the BOC and Mr. Carmichael. So we're involved in things from, from the front end. And to speak to slowing growth, that, that actually happened. I can tell you one instance, there's a development that's located, uh, joins Moses Middle School, and I think it was 130 lot development by Piedmont that actually got pushed back, which now we're building an addition to Moses. We're building an addition to Russell to help support the growth there. But when we know and we can plan in advance, that really helps us better look into that crystal ball and, and see what's going to happen. It keeps kids out of trailers and it keeps kids, you know, yep. it, it, it doesn't tax the, the class size uh, and all things that, that go into deteriorating education. Right. We've got Jimmy Henson also, he's on the Dallas City Council, mm -hmm. on the planning and planning <coughs> board, so we've got two educators on the now. <coughs> Mr. Chair, I just comment, uh, one thing to keep in mind, the Board of Commissioners has helped us to, to look at our ordinances. Uh, we know that there's some serious problems out there with what our ordinance will allow this time. And uh, we've been directed to look at making some changes to it. We've not just worked on the, ec the economic development part as far as new categories, commercial, working on business friendly. We're also taking into account the impacts of what's out there now. Some things that we're just we're just going to have to deal with that might have got started 15 years ago. It's just not hitting hitting the, the ground. But as far as some of the tools we're looking into is right now most of the county, about 80 percent of the county is on R2 residential. That's half acre lots. Is to back that up and increase that lot size. But in that to do that to to keep that vested right thing. From coming out of nowhere and saying, "Hey, we're taking somebody's rights on a property," you got to give a time frame, and so that's something that we've already looked into. We've been talking about it. With but that gives you time to uh, develop. The well, it around says, it "Hey," and, and attack it a little bit at a time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's what it does. Say, "Hey, you got this. We're changing this base zoning, so you can't do half acre lots anymore. You might do an acre or plus at a minimum." And to do that, you're taking possibly some value of a property. So you have to be very careful. So you give them a time frame that in most cases that I've understood from, from attorneys and court system is about, if you give them three years, if they have a sewer, they can hook into the, and do the half acre lots or something, you give them a time frame. If they, after that time frame, they have to come to full compliance. So that's that's one thing. That automatically cuts, cuts that density in half. The other thing is, is looking at different estate residential where you have a larger lot and have incentives for a developer to want to do that instead of uh, 
corn in turban and gutter and cookie cutting it. And that would be a little bit larger lot, but it would be less infrastructure and such. Some of the other things uh, is a master plan residential. It's looking at uh, actual planned uh, development that would uh, have some mixed use in there and uh, also try to work toward uh, uh, has a commercial com retail component in it also. It's an enhanced district. Board of Commissioners and such, we're looking at tree ordinance, tree, tree, have to have some tree counts and such, and also uh, limits on mass grading, which these things will slow down big development. And uh, protection of, of uh, sleep, uh, steep slopes. And, and these gentlemen have been with us <laughs> through a comprehensive planning process, and, and we until the point the COVID came and things changed, we were meeting uh, pretty much once a once a week <coughs> with, with their input on ordinance development. Yeah. So we appreciate it. And we just came through an election cycle where nobody heard any of that. Think about that. That's a lot of great things for the county, and, and we're in the middle of this election cycle. Nobody's, I mean, I, what you just said, and, and I'm part of the process, I just learned about it. So we, we, we've got a little bit of a job ahead of us to make sure that the information is getting, getting, getting disseminated in a, in a meaningful yeah. way. Because there's good, good things, you know, they're talking about the, the private partnership that runs the sewer down to Baker's Bridge, Ridge Road. Well, automatically, you've got at least $10 million in uh, the investment coming straight back within the next few months because we've already got pretty much three developments that's coming in right now. That's small retail, but... but and then, like, we had concerns with you know, some of that great on the sewer, and we discussed with our concerns about you know, that residential just filling up, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and the one down to Baker's Ridge had limitations on it. Mm -hmm. And so it was... <clears throat> That's one thing that was shown from the company in the plan. Mm -hmm. The zoning that Father County has now, we can't supply water to all the houses that are able to be built up there. We don't. But I don't think the number, we would, if everything built that, we'd have 900 or 90,000 people in here. Oh, You just gave Dr. Oakshaw a heart attack. And you know, and as long as all the houses have one kid or so, you know, in the history of one kid in a house, is this not popping out? No, we're greater than average in that. Yeah, I mean, we've done some research. Anything north of the 278 right now, when they build a, let's just say, a 100 home development, figure 70% of those homes are going to create a school age child. So that's 70 kids, half of which are K-5, the other half are 6-12. So when we hear, you know, a thousand unit or, or 350, you're, you're throwing 210 kids in that area that's already overcrowded, even more overcrowded. So um, I've been doing so local kind of rule in Pauling County for over 24 years, both from the part of the Pauling County Board of Commissioners and then to the city of Hiram. And I can say without prejudice toward any previous office holder, this is the first time we've come this close to tackling the issue head on mm -hmm. as to what the actual issue is. This man has heard me gripe about it. I've been sitting on the Planning Commission for 11 years, <laughs> something along those lines since 2007, and it's the first time, even that time, that my gripes have actually Keep driving, progressed. brother. <laughs> Stay loud. I mean, I'm excited about so, it. So, so this is a good segue. Uh, Dr. O'Tonnell, do you have anything to Yeah, no, and, and, and I want to say all the municipalities, county government, chamber, everyone really around this table has done nothing but extend support to the school district, which really helps us continue to do what we're going to do. So for us, it's just a thank you um, for your support and knowing that this truly is about those 30,500 kids out there, because y'all really have always extended the, the hand of support. So, thank you. Jim, if I can just add to this, too, just um, comment to what Brian said. When Brian said sewer, when he hears sewer, he hears residents, residential development. And I, I'm sure Brian would agree, in order to have commercial development, 
got to have the sewer. Sure. Mm -hmm. The sewer, the commercial side's not going to come. Yeah. Without the sewer. I take yes. from Brian that he wants to know when the sewer's getting dry. Right. Anyway. <laughs> so he can, <laughs> he can <laughs> react accordingly. That, 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 that's that, a step that's forward. That's exactly right. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and also right. hook up some of our schools <laughs> to it. <Yeah. laughs> so, I just want to make a little bit. I'm sorry. Um, one of the other things we're doing, too, on these Thursday afternoon. Some of that will, I think, eliminate, not eliminate, but reduce the ability to put residential or help balance it in another way. Exactly. It, it will help to back our, our, our uh, recommendations. Yes. We'll so your rezoning request can now, you've got a policy, you document that the board's adopted, and you can say, yes, that's a good deal, or exactly. no, this isn't consistent with our future language, and this is why it's not good. Yeah. That's, that's all good for us. Any other comments? All right, so that's, that completes the agenda. I have a couple things that I would like to ask everybody. One, uh, uh, does everybody feel like this was a productive w w way to spend your day? Um, and, and if so, would you keep this group the same size for the meeting next quarter, or would you do something different? And there's no right or wrong answer, but I know we've got a lot of people tied up in the room here. Um, you know, I, I think it's important. I think it's important to have this whole group together for several meetings, to, because what? Uh, and I was asked this question earlier um, uh, by one of the reporters. He said, "Look, I've, I've been here a long time, and I've been paying attention to what's going on. And we have the we've seen these meetings happen, and then everybody goes their separate ways, and it kind of falls to the wayside. And I think the only way that um, uh, that, that we stay." Focused moving forward is to is to do this again in another in in the next quarter, and come back with uh, James, Frank, and and Dave and those at least that group there and say, okay, did we get these baseline objectives of these forms and and, and five incentive programs adopted in all three jurisdictions, um, and have we begun to talk about our our planning with our managers uh, and how that's going to how that's going to look moving forward and and, and come back with uh, the next step move to move forward. So if everybody is okay with that, I'd love for you to get your, your phone out and check your calendar and let's let's look what three months down the line might look like and, and have another meeting. I suggest for the next group that maybe uh, is it James Stokes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and that's the other thing. If, if there is somebody that should be here that is not here, absolutely, they need to be here. I, you know, this is my first stab at it, and Dave and I tried to do, uh, you know, Dave tried to run a, run a campaign and, and, and be the county CEO, and I just kind of helped him get this moving in a direction. But if, if there's somebody we missed that needs to be in the room. Uh, so there, what's the lady? Somebody's, there's a lady that, and let, thank you. Yeah, I've already got Ann there. <laughs> should should Ann be here? I think, I, I, think, I think hearing some of the questions that came up about some infrastructure, I think you'll be sure you come in to develop Ann, James with the incentive, and also I would I would see about Lori and George. I'm not telling you, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Burke. I'm just thinking of some of the questions. So, think, most most definitely, yeah. There'll, there'll be assets here to um, help questions and they do a great job for us. Okay. Um, so if, if we shoot for uh, three months out, that's about the middle of September. Um, the 16th, uh, there is an airport for me. So uh, how does the 15th of September, is that fall parade? It, it's not a board meeting. <laughs> I tell you what, I'd like to see happen is another one of Baker Street's ideas that, that I'm not going to take credit for. If each of the eight no longer silos uh, organizations would have two people, like James, if you want to, uh, 
I'm going to use your city manager. Uh, we'll use Kendall and then one of your other public works people, or you, you come yourself. But take two from each of the eight, that would be a 16 person group. And then maybe in four months from now, in other words, in two months from now, those 16 would be, and then two months after that. Uh, so you'd really have more meetings, but the, the large group would only be every four months. Um, I'm good either way, but very respectful of pe people's time. It's hard to, to get this whole group together. <clears throat> what do you think, Frank? One of the things we don't have to do is we don't have to go through all the wickets of uh, the formalities of uh, the announcements. We don't have to do that every four months. I uh, share when you and I had talked about this a couple days on the safety. You know, it's good for the whole group to get together. It's just been great. I mean, talk about Team Pauly. It's fantastic. Um, but also, too, if you, if you, you know, it's been my experience and uh, I've, been in, I've been in county government a little bit of time now. Um, but a lot of times when you have a smaller crowd, smaller group, uh, maybe there's a little bit more free flow of information going. Uh, and then you come back in a bigger group. Uh, and that's the reason why we're having that conversation. So I just want to make that suggestion to the group. And uh, it might be easier for that, that group to actually you know, set a meeting, like the chairman said, maybe every four months, this big group as a follow up. <coughs> How does everybody feel about that? Can you talk about in two months? So we would do around August the 20th, we would do uh, the, uh, the manager and the, and the chairman of each board, so to speak. So it would be David and Terry, myself and uh, Michael would probably have Tom as the second because Michael's going to be the linchpin of 20 all. Uh, Brian and Eric. Uh, James and his right hand, uh, you and your left hand. Um, who am I missing? Does that pretty well get it? And then uh, you would come as an EDO. I training. On that day. Oh, well, we, don't, we don't have to do this. You heard brother not? They haven't let us know that. I would change the Is the 18th a. a, a Angela, would you could you send that out to everybody? Yeah, and then um, whoever from that other list, James, Angel, or Lori, whoever's going to, Chris, you know, you, you guys can work that out and figure out who's coming from there, and you can come from from uh, from Dave. It, it would be a calendar invite, and then we'll set the next meeting up at at that point to send out a couple of options for the big group for the following book. Dan, just a, an administrative point. That small group, if you have the two mayors, the you two, the um, president of the chamber, I do have a quorum for the airport for the airport authority, so I do need to be <laughs> careful of that. So we will have to advertise at least an airport call meeting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have any problem. I actually think it all should be done in the public view. All right. Anybody got anything they want to add before we adjourn? I would like to thank all of you. Myself personally, this was a lot of horse, a lot, a lot of wrangling to get done, and I appreciate everybody taking the time and coming in and putting in the effort. Thank you so much. Ditto, ditto. Yeah, uh, Kerry, is that okay? Are we okay with the airport here? We have to adjourn. But
Can we use that? Can we use the screw again for that thing? For the EDO meeting? For the next, in August? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we'll coordinate all the things. Yes. We'll make sure it's not used for something else. I'm so excited to see they don't have to leave the county to have a meeting. Thank <laughs> you.